Crest Hills. Hi, everybody. Buddy Chris Shumlin with Dr. Ray Thomas. Glad to have you with us today for the first ever meeting between Howard and Robert Morris on a football field. Even though this is a non-conference game, Robert Morris preparing for its first full season in the Big South. And, Ray, there's special meaning to this day today as RMU remembers its founding father of football, the one and only Joe Walton. He passed over the summer. He's a man who meant so, so much to all of us, especially to players like you. It's amazing uh, um, that the fact that when I walk into uh, the stadium and, and and see Joe Walton's name on there and that he's no longer with us. Um, sad moment, but uh, we keep his memory alive. And of course, he's here with us in spirit, though. After a week off, it's time for RMU to get back to business. Presented by the Pittsburgh Airport Area Chamber of Commerce, the unified voice for opportunity, growth, and economic vitality in the Pittsburgh Airport area. It's nearly an uh, opportunity to have full complement of players this weekend. I'm sure but not clock is happening. You can see that on the video. Absolutely. He was down double digit players up at Central Michigan. Speaking of players, Howard's quarterback, Quentin Williams, can do it all. And the Colonials, Jamar Shagak, what a day he had at CMU. 18 tackles. 18 tackles. Anytime you get a player that can get double digit tackles, he's going to be all over the field. Make sure sure they have to be accountable for them during the game today. Looking for a great game here today. Again, it's Howard at Robert Morris coming up next right here on ESPN+. Plus. It is a beautiful first Saturday of fall here in the West Hills of Pittsburgh as Bernard Clark Jr., the head coach of the Robert Morris Colonials, gets set to lead his team out onto the field here at Joe Walton Stadium this afternoon. Temperature at 66 degrees under mixed skies. We could see some rain late in the game, but smoke, this is a perfect setting right now. Oh, it's a perfect, perfect day for football. And how about the crowd? We have people back in the stands. How meaningful this will be. I'm sure the juices is flowing out of that locker room as they run out through the tunnel ring. No. Can't remember the exact count, but I think it's been 671 days, something like that, since uh, we've seen a football game here. Time for the keys to the game brought to you by Ingles. Ray, uh, of course, uh, 
these are significant leading into the ball game today. Well, we definitely got to talk about Quentin Williams as the quarterback for uh, the University of Howard. Last week, he had uh, over 350 yards throwing in the air. He has to protect the ball a little bit more this year. We're on, on, on today's dates, doing that, he had four turnovers uh, last week as well. That was costly against Hampton University. And for Robert Morris, it's obviously get some blocking up front. Oh, after talking to Bernard, Coach Clark this week, he made it known that our offensive line needs needs to come off the ball and establish some dominance against the defensive line of the Bisons. In order for us to run game to get going this week, they have to establish that line. And um, we have to do a better job of getting more than just 39 yards, which they produced last week um, on the run game, get that open. All right, those are the Ingles keys to the game. As you can see, Howard will receive the opening kickoff up here today at Joe Walton Stadium in Moon Township. We mentioned Coach Walton in the pregame show, Smoke, and I know that uh, uh, um, there will be a memorial uh, Ceremony after this ball game today, honoring uh, the founder, the architect of Robert Morris football. Yes, yes, and I'm honored to have an opportunity to speak at the event. I know um, several alumni will be here at the at the uh, uh, stadium just to recognize him once again. But he's he's gone, but never forgotten. Someone's fighting for that W today, um, coming in two teams uh, with, with zero wins. Obviously, it's all for the stakes today to start that win streak going. Yeah, for Howard, they lost to Richmond 38-14, to got buried by Maryland in a, a mismatch, 62 to nothing, And, of course, uh, the battle for the real HU last week, which we got to see uh, with uh, Howard and Hampton. Hampton ended up winning that ball game. 42 to 38 for the Colonials. They played just one game so far. It was a 45 to nothing loss at Central Michigan. The first weekend of the season, they were intending on playing at the University of Dayton, but that game was scratched because of COVID. And I'm sure that there had to be some adjustments. Obviously, the coaching staff had to pivot. Obviously, they had to put in some guys that had not played, shuffled into the lineup. We had some first-year guys, but uh, I think they're back on they're back on schedule this week. Hopefully, we have a better turnout. See Robert Morris getting set to tee up the football. That's Mike Benson. He is the long kickoff man for the Colonials. And the wind is going to play tricks in this ball game oh. here as it's now picking up a little bit. <laughs> they're they playing tease on me right now. I'm excited about this kickoff. Let's get the, let's get the game going. <laughs> <laughs> see, Robert, see Robert Morris is wearing the uh, blue jerseys today. White for Howard. And again, the ball tumbles off the tee, so they're going to have Robert Morris bring a holder out there. Tim Rich is the referee. He and his crew working the ball game today. But as you can see, Chris Charles, one of the wide receivers, will come in and hold the ball for Mike Benson. Okay, we're ready to go. Benson Ooh, sends a knuckler nice, nice. deep and into the end zone. There will be no return by Jabari Knighton, who is back deep. And Howard will have the football at the 25-yard line. First down and 10 to start the ball game off. Uh, it's time for Quentin to start and establish his show right now, let's get this offense going. See if our defense can hold up from their front. Quentin Williams, six feet, four inches tall, 200 pounds, a junior for Howard. 
He's thrown 91 passes already this season, completed 49 of them for 650 yards, four touchdowns, three picks so far on the 2021 campaign. He's got a talented running back off to his shoulder, and that is Jared Hunter, number 22, the 5'10 sophomore. Looks like they're coming out in trips to the right. Robert Morris will shift on the line. Here comes Hunter sweeping to the left. Mm. Able to jump over one would be tackler. And finally, he's put down by Supalani Ma'alei up for Howard. Hey, that's positive game. You know, establishing the run early, seven yards on that carry. You can't ask for more. Second down and three. Williams in the pistol with Hunter to his right shoulder. Slots to both sides. There's Jared Hunter sliding in motion right now. And a pass to the left side, a little mm -hmm. bubble screen. It's complete, but Antoine Murray can't do anything with it. Robert Morris all over the play. And there's Jamar Shagog. He's one of the guys in there for the Colonials. Once again, we'll call his name quite a bit today. Bryce Fontana was at the bottom of that tackle. Swarm to the ball. Uh, there was a number of white, blue jerseys around that ball. That's how you pursue to the ball once the ball is in the air. Loss of a couple of yards makes it third down and five back at the 30-yard line. Looks like they go to switch maybe to the nickel package. Sunbelt Rentals brings you the offensive lineup for the Howard Bison. Talented set of receivers and of course, the running back and the quarterback on this ball club were lights out. It's third down and five, however, as they lost yardage on that last play. Williams wants to go up top, rolls right, mm -hmm. throws, and a nice square and catch is made. And the Bison will have a first down on that play. Hauling in that football that time was the wide receiver Casey Hothrone. If they allow him to sit back in the pocket like that, he, he's going to pick them apart. There was no pressure. Three men to the right, one to the left this time. Play fake, and a tight end makes the catch out on the right side, and again, some positive yards for the Howard Bison. They're going to pick up four on that play. Great job by the corner, forcing uh, the wide receiver to, to take on that block and then shuffling it over and making that tackle. It's a great, great play. Thomas V getting the start today at tight end. He wasn't uh, penciled in to be the starter, but uh, Christian Carter is out with an injury unspecified. Now roll to the left. And another completion. This time, hauling in the football is Tayshawn Porter, the wide receiver, six feet tall, 195, and a senior. And again, Howard will move the sticks. Quentin moving to his left. Left, very athletic, had an open receiver, and made him pay in the flats. Ball in Robert Morris territory now at the 44-yard line. Porter sprints out wide to the right side. He'll be the flanker going in motion now to Sean Simon. Mm. Play fake again, Ooh. and a slant in catch this time for Antoine Murray, the wide receiver, and another strike thrown by Quentin Williams. You can't ask for no more in the cover, too. Guy coming across from the middle. Uh, you got to jump on that. Hook to curl for that linebacker in the middle. That's your play right there. Don't turn your back on the wire on the quarterback. Uh, he'll pick you apart. He sat right in the middle between the uh, free safeties and the safety. Howard on the march right now at the Robert Morris 27 and a half yard line. Here's Williams. One step mm -hmm. drop. Now pressure and he throws quickly and it goes incomplete. Good pressure this time. For the Colonials from Matthew Holmes, the defensive end, the redshirt senior. Now, that's what you need. That, you know, more pressure like that will obviously make him throw the ball quicker. We need to continue to go and continue that type of, type of run style off the outside. Second down and 10. Howard. Quentin Williams, the quarterback, looking over to the sideline to head coach Larry Scott for the play. 
Hunter to his right shoulder this time. We'll get the football, and it'll be a rush play, and he gets dragged down on the play by the Colonials. Good defense that time, allowing just about a yard, and that's it. That's a great job coming down the line after the flow, going to his opposite side, coming down the line and making that tackle. Great job by the D lineman right there. It's third down and nine now. And again, some defensive shifts here for the Colonials, right? They look like they have a bunch of formation at the top, and they have two, two receivers, empty backfield, shotgun. Oh. Running back comes back to the back. Williams. Oh. Has time. Hmm. Now it runs out of time. It throws and complete down to the 20-yard line. It'll be shy of the first down marker, even though it is complete. Good tackle by Taven Harville, the defensive back, a graduate student for the Colonials that time. It brings up fourth down and two. Fourth down. And it looks like Howard's going to go for it. They keep the offense out there. This would be a great stop. Robert Morris can hold him here. Backs against the wall. Porter and Murray are both to the right side, and now going in motion is Simon. Here's Williams. Oh. Big pressure. Throws, great and job. it's going to go incomplete. They rushed him that time, and he had to hurry the throw. A good play defensively by the Colonials. Lorenzo Uline was in on him that time. Chris. Robert Morris will have the ball when we return. No score here in the first quarter on ESPN Plus. Power isn't colonial offense led by quarterback George Martin out of Ringgold High School in Monongahela, Pennsylvania. Takes the field for the first time today after the colonial. Defense held Howard and took over on downs. Here's Martin and the give to Elijah Jackson, his first carry of the year. He strings it out, turns the corner, and Jackson is ahead for a 15-yard gain and a first down for the Colonials. Hey, just with the doctor's order, Chris, uh, we asked and said, oh, we got a flag on the play um, before. Holding on a wide out. Uh, tough break for the Colonials here, Smoke, because that's exactly what Coach Clark wants this offense to do, and there that's move is. that ball, mm -hmm. especially on the ground. Especially in the stretch play, he had an opportunity uh, to stretch that wide. He had some daylight on the sideline. Receivers have to um, do a better job and not hold in. Uh, see if they can bounce back. Here's the offensive lineup for the hometown Robert Morris Colonials. Sunbelt Rentals sponsors our lineups here on ESPN Plus. Martin rolling right, throwing downfield, ball at the hip of the receiver, and he could not bring it in, unfortunately. And that was Chris Charles, the wideout, 6'3, 200 pounds. He turned before he had the ball secured. You got to help the quarterback out. If it's in your hands, you got to try to catch the best way you can. Brings up second down and 14. Remember, the Colonials had that holding penalty on a 15-yard gain that was nullified. Mm -hmm. The spot foul pushed the football back to the 16-yard line. And Martin has to dig himself out of the hole. Empties the set. Now it's a little... Jet sweep run to the near side, uh, and I think he's short. He may be, uh, yeah, he may be short. Time for the quote of the game. Game presented by Ehrlich Pest Control. Defend your home against pests with Ehrlich Pest Control, your local pest control experts. Go to jcerlich.com for more information and get a free quote and stay pest free. Of course, the quote this week was all about the defense from last week. Coach Bernard Clark Jr. telling us that Jamar Shagog's been all over the field on defense since he's gotten here. We're excited to be able to have him here for four more years when you have 18 tackles. 
that's a pretty good Saturday. He and Buzz are meshing well, our quote of the game. Now Martin Flagging winding up, break. throwing downfield, incomplete, but flags Flag fly out of the sky. Looks like we have a little bit of a holding, maybe. DB. Receiver intended. Chris Charles. Charles got tangled up with the D-backs. Pass interference. Defense number nine. Defense. The ball will be placed by rule at the spot for the foul. And an automatic first down. So the Colonials end up with a first down on the pass interference call against the Howard Bison. Keeping the plays going. Positive drive. Keep the drive going. Maybe they can continue to capitalize on this one. Line of scrimmage now the 33-yard line. So the Colonials pick up a first down by penalty. They're going to send three men to the right, one to the left this time. Martin has Elijah Jackson in the eye behind him. High snap controlled. And Elijah will run to the left and pick up a couple out near the 35-yard line before he draws a crowd. Yeah, once again, you know, they, the offense line obviously is driving out to the, uh, out on the ball. They have to make sure that have three, three defensive front got to be able to maintain and, and collect that leverage. Jevin Jackson making the stop on the play for Howard. Gain of two, second down and eight for the Colonials now. Just underway, no score. Robert Morris's first possession. It's Jackson again. Mm. Mm. This time he got mm. hogtied and thrown down after about a one, maybe a yard and a half game. That's a great job with a safety filling the hole in the back of that linebacker on that pull and counter play. Number nine. <laughs> I think I like that number, Chris. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> number nine way back in the day used to make a, I mean, a whole yeah, bunch of tackles. Yeah, I just feel like, <laughs> like people who wear that number, they just have something about them. A little sweat. Rodney Denard, of course, number nine for Howard here today. Martin. Oh, little bubble some. screen, and that's going to be complete, but again, shy of the first down, only out to about the 41-yard line is where the Colonials offense will end there. And on the catch, DeAndre Hicks, the wide receiver, the redshirt senior, but that puts Robert Morris into a punting situation. Great tackle. Great tackle. Looks like the punt team out. George Souders, the third, is the punter for the Colonials. Little Australian run. And the kick will be taken at the 14-yard line. Reversal of field. And some room and some blocking. And a pretty good return to the near side for the Howard Bison by A.J. Boyd, the 5'8", 185-pound senior. Take a timeout, no score. Howard has the ball when we return on ESPN+. Plus.
Midway through the first period of play, no score between Robert Morris and Howard in their first ever meeting. Chris Shovlin and Dr. Ray Smoke Thomas on the call here today at Joe Walton Stadium. Glad to have you with us. Line of scrimmage is the 28-yard line. Howard takes over, and right now, Quinton Williams has two protectors in the backfield with him. And Howard will run the football. And on the carry, this is going to be Hawthorne. And he'll come out of there and pick up about six. It's a big game. He's been picking up a lot of yards on the first, first carry. He really is. They're getting something, something going on the outside, which is positive. Positive yards of field. And Quinton is always, he's four for the Bison. From their own 34-yard line. Little play fake and a square out over to the right side. That's Hawthorne once again hauling it in and tiptoeing at the sideline. Enough for a Howard first down. Hey, take what the take what the defense gives you. I mean, you don't have to go for the home run shot. Continue to matriculate down the field. It's a good way. I, I do believe this is how he, he he managed to do the same last week against Hampton. Off of play action. Has time, oh, and now he runs out of time great. and tries to heave the ball over mm. to the right side. And he got decked on the play. Big, big rush coming from a number of the Colonials. Is that out at the bottom of that pile for Robert Morris. Garrett, Garrett. Behrman, who's played so well this year. Definitely. Love the pressure. Relentless list. Started, continued the gun. Did not stop. Great effort. And the first contact that time, Smoke, was made by Matthew Holmes, the defensive end, who's having a pretty good ball game so far this afternoon. And now we're going to get an intentional grounding call <laughs> against Howard's point. quarterback, hmm. Quinton Williams, and credit that to the Colonial defense. Yeah. You, I mean, they can't sit back. You sit back, he's going to pick you apart. So you have to continue to get pressure from the main guys without blitzing. I think they're doing a great job with that. Defensive ends, holding and containing inside so he doesn't bounce out. Uh, great job by the defensive ends right now. So a loss of yards and a loss of down makes it second down and long. And this time it's going to be Jared Hunter. And Hunter gets piled up. And you see Anelio Bazzacco in there along with a host of other Robert Morris tacklers. Jordan Johnson. He had no room there. They met him at the point. Ricardo Watson in there as well. Third and long. Double wides. Third and 18 to be precise. Let's see what Williams has in his bag of tricks. He's going to send Hunter to his left shoulder. Three to the right, one to the left. Williams, two-step drop, and now it's going to step up and throw to the sideline. It's going to be incomplete. Again, the Colonials had coverage. John, the intended receiver, Tayshawn Porter, and, and with him step for step was defensive back Sidney Ottinger. Yeah, I thought they caught him in um, with those double wides without getting either the nickel inside of the game, but they were able to do, do it within cover two, had the linebacker drop to the middle. Um, it was good coverage. Great coverage. Fourth down at 18 for Howard. Line of scrimmage to the 31, and the Colonials should end up with pretty decent field position out of this, you would expect. Dylan West is the putter for the Bison. It's a good snap. Not much pressure. The wind is going to hold this football up, sure. and it's going to get a great Robert Morris bounce back into Howard territory at the 46-yard line. So the Colonials are going to have less than half the field with which to work. When we return, 524 left here in the first period of play. It's Robert Morris 0, Howard 0 on ESPN+. Plus.
sun shining through the cloud cover right now here at Joe Walton Stadium in Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Just off the runway of the Pittsburgh International Airport here in Western PA. Right now, the Colonials back on offense. First down and 10 after a short punt by Howard. They got caught up in the wind. Here's Elijah Jackson trying to slip through a hole over on the left side. He'll find just a couple of yards. Yeah, it was good contain outside. Catching me in cover three right now. Once again, the offensive line needs to get a little bit more push up front so he'll be able to open up those, those scenes. Deion Harry made the tackle on the play on Jackson's run. Jackson did not play at Central Michigan last week. Again, I can't remember the exact number. It was either 15 or 19 members of the Robert Morris football team that did not make the trip due to the COVID protocol. How about this? Four oh, receivers over to the left side and a quick throw, and it goes incomplete, unfortunately. They got to help the quarterback out. It, it, your job is to catch it. His job is to throw it. That's a catchable ball. He needs to pull that one in. Sometimes you get a little too excited when you see that ball coming your way. And that's what happened there to DeAndre Hicks. Now it's third down at eight for Robert Morris. Jack Odekoven is the man over to the far boundary line. Slots to both sides. Martin drops back. Oh, he's open. And Martin is going to be sacked. Big hit that time by the defense of Howard. And leading the charge was linebacker Christian White. Great play. Great play. Although he did have a receiver coming across the middle. He got there quick enough. Great job by the defense. Big loss on the play as you see Martin in the pocket just broke down and a great play by Christian White. Yeah, he has to come off that receiver a little bit earlier. He was looking down, down deep where he could have that drop off right in the middle. Souders back to punt again. And this one will knuckle to the near side and bounce to the boundary line. Oh, he didn't touch it. Great, great job. Great and job. it did come out of bounds. They're going to mark it out at the nine yard line. Boy, nines are wild today. But it's because <laughs> of you, Smokey. You wore that number nine. I know. I mean, I, th I think I need to go to the casino after this. <laughs> <laughs> So Howard will be pinned back deep in their own territory inside the 10-yard line, or are they going to move that ball up to the 11? Let's see. They've got the sticks, the yard marker at the 11-yard line on the far side. They have the ball spotted back at the 9 on the near side. So let's see where the officials decide to place it. Oh, you did move it? Oh, no. Yeah, they're moving it up to the 11. Here's Williams. And a run play to Hunter. Great job. Great and job. Hunter gets smothered by Jamar Shagog. That's, that's, that's the only thing a, a defensive coordinator asks was stay home. You know he's going to come back to you. Came right back to him, flowed, made the tackle. Uh, great job in the back there. About a two yard gain, a short two. As we see Williams get set to go again, he'll send the tight end in motion. That's Brown. Now a quick pass over to the near side, and again, Jamar Shagog breaks on the running back, trying to make that catch behind the line of scrimmage, and Jamar Shagog smothers Jared Hunter once again. Great job pursuing to the ball, open field tackle. As soon as he catches, you deliver the blow. Nice job on the defense. Get the trips again to the top of the top of the screen. Williams, who's been facing a lot of pressure from that Colonial defense here, after they moved the ball pretty easily in, in their first series before the Colonials shut them down. Okay, they go to drop back. Into the there he flats. is again. Throw. Goes down over the middle. He's got a man wide open this time, and it's going to be a big and badly needed first down for, for 
Richie Ilaraza, that's a 5'10 freshman. Great job by Quentin going down to his D check. Check it off right in the middle. Great job on the crossing. He sat right in the middle of the zone. Wide open, pitch and catch. First down and 10 now. Howard with the football at its own 30-yard line right between the two hash marks. Williams. Flushed. Sidearm throw, oh. and that is. one That's is pick. picked pick. off. That's a pick. The Colonials end up with a pick yes, over sir. on the far side. Yes, sir. Did he get to, did he get a foot in? He apparently did. And he being Lorenzo Uline, who brought that ball back down to earth. Great job. Great job. Let's take another look. Cover two. Great break on the ball. Close. Great closing speed. Great job. Lorenzo Uline stepping right in front of the receiver as the ball was set to land in his arms. And he got the INT. Yeah, you can't ask for no more than better than that. And cover two right there. He was late, late with the throw. Great job by the defense. The intended receiver, Ilaraza, once again. And now the Colonials back on offense, going to run the football. This time carrying the ball for his first carry of the day is Jonathan Wynn. Wynn is going to pick up six for Robert Morris to the Howard 44-yard line. Martin sends two wideouts to the right side. Flanker is tight to the left. Martin looking right for a slant in, and that ball on a sliding grab Great job. is hauled in That's the by way to go down and DeMonte it. Martin. That's the way to go down and get it. Make a play for your quarterback. Keep the drive alive. Great job by the wideout. And a good slide catch there by Martin. It'll be a first down for Bobby Moe. The Colonials at the Howard 38-yard line. First down and 10. Chris Charles back in will be the wide out to the far side left. Tight slot left. And a receiver to the right. As oh. again, the Colonials are going to keep it on the ground. Ooh. And another big run play as they gallop hard. 74. And once again, that is Jonathan Wynn carrying that football. And Wynn will have another Colonial first down with some hard charging. Are they still collecting pancakes? <laughs> 70. <laughs> wow. Now that is how you drive a defensive player and finish your block. That's what we're talking about when the offensive line trying to dominate and creating space for your running backs. You're talking 74. That's Dylan Young up front. Now it's first down and 10. Oh, collision in the backfield. Throw Martin's away. still alive and then throws the ball away. He's out of the pocket. And we're going to get a flag over on the far side of play. Legal men downfield. I think with the screen, they broke. In the final half minute of the first quarter. Oh, they waved it? And they picked it up, apparently. From the 28-yard line, second down and 10 for the Colonials. No score in this ball game between Robert Morris and Howard University, their first ever meeting. Martin goes left this time. It's two, two tight slots to the left. Here's a little toss on that jet sweep action, and this time Hicks won't be able to go anywhere. He gets trapped over as he turns the corner on the near side. Great scrape by the linebacker right there. A little He's getting a little bit chippy down there, a little chippy. Uh, but that was a great play by the linebacker scraping over, coming to fulfill and make the tackle. Third down for Robert Morris now. They picked up only a half yard on the play. Now the officials will stop action. As we've come to the end of the first quarter. 
After one period, it's been a defensive battle. Robert Morris and Howard nodded at zero here on ESPN+. Plus. Mountain Dew knows that fans deserve something that will quench their thirst every day of the week, especially on game day. So no matter where you might be cheering on your team, it's always a good time for a do. Mountain Dew, do the do. And right now they're doing the do right here. They are. <laughs> Listen, I, establishing and, and setting the tone, the offensive line is doing just that. You can't ask for no more. Just like we said in the keys to the game, if the offensive line can control their D-line, we should have a good opportunity of scoring some points, open up the line, open up these holes for these running backs. First play of the second quarter. It's third down and nine for the Colonials at the Howard 29-yard line. Little bubble screen is going to be completed. And this one's going to go for a first down plus all the way inside the 10-yard line. Chris, that brings back chills. That used to be an opioid screen right there. <laughs> uh, You're talking old school now, old school, opioid right? Gary. Yes, indeed. Instead yeah, that's Jalen Brown, number 80, the wide receiver, 6'2", 175 for the Colonials. And he puts them inside the red zone, down to the nine-yard line, first and goal to go. Martin goes wide right, and back to the left side comes the man who just caught that ball, Jalen Brown. One-on-one -on -one up at the top. Here comes Elijah Jackson. Rumbling his way down to about the five-yard line. And it's going to be second down and goal to go from there. The 
definitely setting them up. Possibility to maybe shoot that fade to the corner. After a scoreless first quarter, Ray, it's important to get on the board right here and now. I mean, especially early in the second, we, we're doing well. They're still driving. They can gain the momentum right now. Um, we, we would love to punch this in for six. Martin has everybody spread. Jackson, the lone running back. Quarterback, Quarterback draw. Oh, and call. George Martin dances in from five yards away. The Colonials score their first touchdown of the season and the first of this game. 6 nothing. they lead with 13-39 to play here in the first half. That's a great, that's a great setup. Um, spread them out wide, have the opening of the interior quarterback key, sell the great touchdown. George Martin, a five-yard run. Nick Vesegli is on to kick the extra point for Robert Morris University. And it is true, it's a 7-0 Robert Morris lead early in the second period of play. George Martin took the snap, hesitated, and then ran straight ahead for the first score of this game. Smoke, it looked like Howard wasn't expecting George Martin to run. They did not. Once they turned the inside, linebackers turned it back, back to the, to the um, quarterback, and obviously they spread him out wide, caught him in a, a great scheme. Great call by the offensive one. In. Here's Bernard Clark, Jr., Tiger Clark, as he was nicknamed when he was the MVP of the 1987 Orange Bowl for the U. The U. Got to love the U. Got to love the U. Benson is on as the long kickoff man for Robert Morris. And Jabari Knighton is deep to receive. Again, a knuckleball kick. Knighton oh, is going to watch board. it bounce. And he picks it up late. Mm, good move. But a nice zigzag move on the return to the 30, up to the 37-yard line before he's bumped out on the Robert Morris side. Charles him. making the stop on the play on the special teams. They had him pent in, but sometimes he, he obviously burst through. Great, great movement. Great step to step outside. Could have had him pent in back on the 25 from the stay. They're going to start at the 40 on a good return by Jabari Knighton of Howard University. 
Well, let's see if Quentin Williams, Jared Hunter, and the offense for the Bison can respond to Robert Morris's initial touchdown of the ball game. As we said, Williams really had the moving downfield at ease mm -hmm. in that first series, but the Colonial defense started clamping down on him. But this time, he's going to find a receiver wide open downfield, a little hook move in to the inside, and Antoine Murray is going to feel the catch in traffic. That's a great job by Quinn. He had an opportunity that he could have kept it and run. Um, he came right before he went over the line of scrimmage, started, started step, stayed, and executed a pass. But he had two options. He could have hit the, the slant coming across the middle, or he could have ran for another 20, 25 yards. Defensive back on the play, Taven Harville shake it up, and the training staff is out to check on him. In the meantime, we'll take a timeout. 7-0, Robert Morris over Howard early in the second quarter. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Football is the game of life, and it brings the community together. White, black, boys, girls. Flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. Anybody can play. That family value, that brotherhood, is everything. It's really what all it's about, is just having a good time and being able to play. There's never been a better time to play. Whether you're a contractor or do-it-yourselfer, Sunbelt Rentals is committed to making it easy to get the tools and equipment you need. With a vast network of locations across the U.S. and Canada, no one brings more yes to your project. Our broad inventory and dedicated team of experts makes equipment rental absolutely available, positively reliable, and unquestionably easy. Visit sunbeltrentals.com to reserve your equipment or find a location near you. Go lighting. We make it happen. Taven Harville was shaken up on that last play, but was able to walk off on his own, and that's good to see. He is one tough cookie. First down and 10 now. Howard after the big pass play. Ooh, and another build. big hit at the line of scrimmage as we saw the running back Hunter come through that line and get chopped down immediately in a big, big play for Robert Morris off that defensive front by Bryce Fontana. That's the way to fill the hole. That's the way to fill the hole. Great job. Running back wasn't expected for him. That big body to be right there. Great job, 5-7. Gain of one, second down nine for Howard. No, this, the offensive line is looking a little tired right now. The, the defensive line for Robert Morris is starting to get a little push in the backfield. Just like that. A little whirly bird option play and a throw down. Field goes Great through job. the hands of the intended receiver, the wideout that Williams was looking looking for was Deshaun Simon slanting to the near boundary line. That, that pressure up the middle right there gave him gave him just enough time to be off with that pass. Defense for Robert Morrison has looked tough in this first half. They're definitely holding it down in the trenches. Looks like they're doing a, a quick change and a switch in the lineup right now. Hopefully they don't get caught. Third trips, down and nine now. Trips up top. Cover two. Free safety needs to get over. Another big rush. Stay with him. And Great they finally job. do get him. That time Garrett Fairman reached out, tripped him up. And Anelio Bazako was there. 
and they had a whole bunch of help out there for Robert Morris that time. The defense was just swarming. You know what? He held on to the ball way too long. Should have got should have threw the ball to the sideline and threw it away, but he instead took a sack. I'm not sure if he's maybe gun shy um, and, and not throwing an interception, but obviously you need to make sure you take care of the ball, but you definitely could have had an opportunity to throw that way instead of taking that sack. Now, obviously, we've been taken out of field goal range. Kick it just last week, right? Yeah, 42-yarder. 42-yarder last week. Uh, just that was for Raji Woodson. The yeah, kicker, just yeah. took him out of field goal range. Instead, they'll punt. And again, this one will come to the sideline and will be a relatively short punt. So let's see where they spot it out. They're going to say at the 15-yard line. Still, Robert Morris will be deep in its own territory, but you would have expected them to be a little deeper, but that one just got away from Dylan West. Hercules Tires is the official tire of the Big South Conference and for over 65 years has been providing tires with unbeatable quality at an unmatched value. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, Her Hercules Tires invites you to ride on our strength. For a retailer near you, visit HerculesTires.com. Colonials with the ball, first down and 10. Martin drops back, gives off. Elijah Jackson through the hole, 20, up to the 30. Great seal blocked by the tight end in 86 on the counter coming through. Great run. Rodney Denard makes the stop, but the Colonials get a chunk. Great block. Hit the hole. Here they come again. First down and 10. Again, it's Elijah Jackson, but this time the play will be snuffed out on a good tackle from Jevin Jackson, the defensive lineman for the Howard Bison. We'll stop him at the line. That's a great job. He started with almost, I believe he was double team, was able to get through that to make the tackle. Good job. Under 11 minutes to go here in the first half of play. Robert Morris with a 7-0 lead at home. If you're joining us a little bit late, touchdown scored by the quarterback on a keeper, George Martin, from five yards out. Did that with 13.39 to go here in the second quarter after a scoreless first period. Martin looking for the long ball. And it's going to be broken up down at the 32-yard line over on the far side of play. Great defense. Great defense was able to look back for the ball. Avoid the pass interference. Great job. Off of play action, looking for Hicks on the fly to the sideline. Great job by the DB, getting his head back, feeling the receiver. Great job, Ken Axman. Almost picked it off, actually. Third down and 10 now. Brown and Hicks go to the right side. Single man left. Martin, rush coming, look out. Got to make that tackle. And Martin throws over to the far side and just gets rid of the football. Good job. DeAndre Hicks, closest man to it, over on the boundary line in front of the Howard University bench. And the Howard defense comes up big here, Smoke, yes, as they, they hold Robert Morris to a punting situation. Hey, when you're going deep like that, going back to that two plays previously, that was a great job by the defensive back, holding down a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Bell technique, great job. George Souders the third is the punter for Robert Morris. And I think he's trying to lobby the officiating crew to put more time on the play clock. And I think they did, did reset it. Souders stands at his own 16-yard line. He will punt it away to Jabari Knighton, the lone back for Howard. Again, he'll run it Australian style over to the right, and Knighton had to circle under that ball. The wind is playing a few tricks out here today, 
as he was able to field it at around the 36, 37 yard line, and that's where Howard will take possession. No break, no break. Yeah, that looked a little bit shaky, but he was able to corral it, get, get underneath it, and um, possess the ball. The last thing they need right now is a turnover on special teams. 7 0 game, Robert Morris on top. And Howard comes back out offensively with Quinton Williams running the attack. Or will he be? I see Andre Lindsay coming into the ball game, number one at quarterback. Lindsay gets the snap. He's the runner. And he's going to run that football. And he'll be able to find about nine. Definitely running that option style. A little wildcat action, mm -hmm. I guess, huh? Yep, we're going to see Quentin Williams check back in after Lindsey ran that one play and picked up nine yards. It's second down and one for Howard at their own 44-yard line. Who running back in is number 35, Bedell. This is Williams looking left the whole time, firing downfield, and a nice catch right at the top of the artificial turf that time and hauling that one in is Antoine Murray once again. That's a big first down for the Bison. That's a great job by the wide receiver getting on top of that DB, turned the DB around and made a great going down to the ground catch. DB didn't have a chance once you turn your back. Put it right in the basket. Mm -hmm. Now Hunter on the sweep to the left. And Hunter's gonna pick up four or five. Great job on the DB coming back here, pill drill. Didn't allow himself to get cut by the lineman. The lineman's job was to cut him on outside. Did a little bit of a pill drill that you used to call it back in the days by Coach Rad when we played here. Uh, great job by the defensive back waiting for his fellas to come and help him out and didn't lose his footing by the offensive lineman that was coming towards him. Sidney Ottinger making the stop for Robert Morris, but it's a gain of five. Second and five now for Howard. Williams floats up. one out to Hunter over on the left side. He's able to spin out of the one tackle. Mm. And get to the sticks, and that's where Jamar Shagok throws him to the boundary line. But it's another first down for the Bison. <sighs> it would have been close if he was able to come up here and uh, secure that tackle. Great job by the running back, keeping his balance, making him spin, making the first guy miss. First down, Howard at the Robert Morris, 27. Here's a reverse, and they're going to run the football. Hawthorne over to the right side, down to the 20, 15. And Hawthorne maintaining his balance until he got to the 12-yard line before the play was finished off. Great run. Great patience by the wide receiver coming around on that run. He actually was pent in by the defense. They was positioned perfectly, uh, waiting for the return of the re reverse coming around, but didn't make the tackle, and obviously he gained it additional positive yards. Great job of being patient by the wideout. First down and 10 from just outside the 12-yard line now. Howard on the attack trying to tie this football game up. Here's a throw, and this one's going to be a touchdown. Williams throwing a strike down to Tayshaun Porter. He stretched those arms out and stretched them again over the goal line after the catch and run. A touchdown from 12 and a half yards away, and Howard is an extra point kick away from tying up this ball game. That's a great job. I believe he had one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker coming across on that circle route. Um, great job. Kicker is Faraji Woodson. And we're tied. Seven all. 7.29 remaining here in the first half of play. And we've got a ball game.
Well, at the start of the afternoon, we told you to look out for Quentin Williams, and Ray, he's starting to feel his game. Yeah, he's starting to loosen up things. Uh, it was a great, great job by the running back coming out of the backfield, waited for him to cross once he was wide open. Great catch by the, uh, by the running back as well. I'm um, coming out of the backfield too, being patient, stretching that run all the way to the back, to this front of the end zone. Williams, 13 of 18 on the afternoon so far, 130 yards, and of course throwing that first touchdown pass of the game. But he's been sacked twice, so the Colonial defense has given him some heat so far. Antoine Murray, four catches for 60 yards, and of course uh, Hawthorne with three balls and 18 yards receiving. Hey, listen, we got a ball game, right? Right, that's well, what we, we do. That's what we came out here to see. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see if Roger Woodson kick the football away to the Colonials now. Keeping the ball on the tee has been a little bit of an issue today, but this time it stays on its own. And a line drive kick, and the Colonials won't be able to return this one. Back deep to receive for Robert Morris was Jonathan Wynn, the running back. But instead, Robert Morris will have the football on the touchback at the 25-yard line, first down and 10. And we have just about seven and a half minutes left here in the second period of play. All, all knotted up at seven. Hey, listen, I mean, at the end of the day, um, whatever you've been doing thus far has been working. So just keep it up. Uh, continue to drive forward offensive line like we spoke of early creating that tempo creating that that pace um, in the trenches is showing to prove that um, we can actually move the ball so great job by the O-line hopefully they continue to do it Jake Capella comes in for Robert Morris he'll play in the tight end spot he's the wingman to the right side of the formation George Martin the handoff oh great block and that run by Jonathan Wynn out around the left side, but Wynn ran out of room quickly there, despite the good block, but he'll pick up three. Right, it was a great seal um, by the tight end on the end. Once again, another pancake right there. <laughs> I think they're in competition today. Second down and seven. As we come down to the seven minute mark here in the second period. Three wide to the right this time for Martin. Another run play for the Colonials. Another hole opens up off the left side and running through it. Jonathan Wynn once again. Wynn will find uh, another three yards or so. And on the stop that time for Howard was Darian Brookenberg. It definitely have some movement up front. Um, there's definitely a, a nice little battle going on uh, in the trenches right there. Third down, a little less than four for Robert Morris. Trips right up the top. Martin brings Elijah Jackson back in. May catch him right there. Martin with protection, Great throws job. one down over the middle on the square end, and it's complete. Right into the hands of DeMonte Martin. A big Robert Morris first down out to their own 45-yard line. They got a little tempo here, a little tempo. May they, they may catch him in a switch right now. Now Martin calling the play quickly. And the Colonials will run the football to the left. And Elijah Jackson will find room out to the 50-yard line right at the midfield stripe is where they plant him. That's a pickup of five. That's a great move on the whole offensive line, moving to the left. Great movement against the D line. Right now, they got their hands on it. Hands on the hips right now. Maybe a little bit of tie right now. Again, wide right will go Jalen Brown for Robert Morris. Martin will send three receivers in that direction. Elijah Jackson stays in the backfield off of his right shoulder. And now, timeout is going to be called don't think the Colonials were actually set. No. Good call. Good call timeout. Ray, I have to ask you, what have you been impressed with so far in this ballgame today from both these ball clubs? Um, like we talked about earlier, 
Um, our, the offensive line establishing a run game is what we came and what we said they needed to get done. So obviously they went into practice last week and earlier this week to make sure they reassured their upfront passing game and establish a run game. And obviously when you establish that run game, it's opening up the uh, passing game for, for Robert Morris. And obviously uh, Quentin, he's doing well for Howard uh, right now and he's passing the ball. Obviously he had that one turnover that was costly. And, but he, you know, battled back, caught a touchdown, um, passed for a touchdown just a, a, a quarter, not a quarter ago, just um, a few seconds ago um, to the running back outside of back, out of the backfield. But I think both offices are trying to find their niche. They're trying to see what they're comfortable with. Um, but I think right now Robert Morris has this running game and it's doing a lot of wearing on the defensive side of the, of the, um, the Bisons. All four receivers are to the right side this time for Robert Morris. And the officials now are set to resume play with 514 left here in the first half. And that one on one on top. They should do Indiana up top. Nope. Now they're going to run the ball, and it'll be Elijah Jackson finding about two. And a nice takedown on the play by Aaron Motley of Howard. I'm, I'm liking what I see at the front line right now. They're, they're battling. There's a lot of battling going on in the trenches. They're finishing their blocks. You're seeing, you know, defense alignment picking themselves up. That's how you, you have to get nasty. If you, if you want to um, gain that, that leverage, that advantage in the front end. You got to be nasty down there. Oda Copeland back in. Wide receiver to the right side. There's a slot man right. And we've got yes, some indeed. movement on the line of scrimmage. And it looks like encroachment on Howard. Let's see what the official call will be. If that's the case, it's going to be a Robert Morris first down. Offside. It Defense. was encroachment. They were not Five drawn. Great job, so by, first um, great job by Martin. He hasn't used a hard count all game. Pulls it out of the bag, and, and this is what you get. Great job. Moss Sacramento comes into the ball game now for Robert Morris. He's an extra tight end. First down and 10. Colonials with the football at the 44-yard line. In the Howard side of the field, four and a half to go here in the first half of play as Oda Coben goes over to the right side now. Martin feeds off Elijah Jackson. Little stop and go move. Moving Jackson bought himself an extra yard. Bunch of tacklers in there for Howard that time. Aaron yeah, Walker, the defensive back, coming up. It's definitely setting up that naked boot. If, if we continue to run the way we're running right now, it can be wide open. Bringing that DB back up in that defensive end. If they keep crashing down is the way they're crashing down right now. Um, it would be a great call if they did that, that naked bootleg. Hicks and over Odekoven out to the right. Brown is to the left. Martin is back to pass. Has time, winds up, throws deep downfield. It's a wow. jump catch, Ooh. and it's a touchdown for Robert Morris. How about that from 44 yards away? <laughs> hey, that may be on Sunday. You got boss right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't ask for no more. That's my ball. I'm going to get it. Go and get it. That's what you do. Great job. DeAndre Hicks. A beautiful jump catch. When he landed, he found his footing, and he traipsed into the end zone the rest of the way. Mm, wasn't enough. The catch wasn't enough. I want more. Great job. Great job. Who wants it more? Great catch. Nick Maseglia for the extra point kick. It's tall. It's end over end. It's good. And the Colonials have taken a 14 to 7 lead over the Howard Bison with three minutes, 30 seconds left here in the second period of play on ESPN+.
Smoke Thomas, this was a pretty pass and a pretty catch. I mean, what, what are you going to see the box out? Go get it. I want the ball that more than you do, TV. Finish the play. The, DeAndre Hicks officially a 43 yard touchdown pass from George Martin to DeAndre Hicks, and the Colonials have the lead again 14 to 7 over Howard. At halftime today, we'll talk with Robert Morris University Vice President and Director of Athletics, Chris King. He'll be joining us here in the booth. Looking forward to talking with Chris. Former alumni. That's true. <laughs> Just like you. Yep. Here's Benson's kick. He'll travel down to the eight-yard line. This is Knighton on the return. He's shown a little bit of danger out there so far in his returns, and he brings it back to the 31-yard line. Of a slip, but they give him a couple more blocks. He may, he may break one, uh, but he's slippery out there. 324 left. We're in the first half of play. Chris Shovlin with Dr. Ray Thomas. Smoke Thomas from Robert Morris University football fame back in the early days of the Colonials. War number nine in that secondary. Good times, then. Uh, good times. Um, I, I'm actually looking down below and I see a couple of uh, alumni. See, I think Alex Wilson is down there. Uh, who else do we have? I see William Weathers, uh, former Robin Morris player, still coming back out. I'm sure they're coming to the memorial service uh, to represent uh, for Coach Walton this afternoon. Yep, that'll be after the ball game. Of course, Will Weathers has a couple of kids in this game that he coached. He does. Two freshmen starting in the middle from DeMatha. A little jump stop and a nice cut this time by Jared Hunter. But again, the Colonial defense all over it. These guys are playing some hard football here today. You see Jacob White coming out of the safety spot to help out. Yeah, the defense needs to make sure that um, they continue to come at. Him. You know, these are these. You, you can't lull, lull yourself to sleep and then um, continue to not to protect your house. Do what you need. Do what you need to do. Close out the quarter hall. Quentin Williams. Pocket breaks down, Here it is. and he almost escaped, but the Colonials trapped him for the sack. Great job. Great job by the defensive line, closing him in, pressure. But that was, to be honest, a uh, covered sack right there. Covered sack all day. Great job by the secondary. He had no one to actually throw to. All receivers were covered. We got to get you at some point. Great job by the secondary. Up front, Garrett Fairman, Matthew Holmes, Supalani Ma'alei, all in there with the pressure. Here's Williams again, Ooh. under pressure, throws a sidearm pass, and that one's going to be complete. How he got that out of there, I have no idea, but he got it into the hands Quinn, of Casey Hawthorne. Great, great throw, great throw by Quinn, under pressure, sidearm delivery. Look a little bit Patty Mahomish. <laughs> that's a great pass, man. Under pressure. But, you know, that's, that's what he can do. You know, yeah. the, I mean, last week he showed that, obviously, the career um, passing yards. Give him some time. He'll pick you apart like we spoke of earlier. It was a good, solid game they played against Hampton last they week, did. although they did lose it. 42-38. to 38. It was a thrilling game in D.C., at the D.C. United Stadium. Here's a long ball. Williams letting go the whole works, and he overthrew his intended receiver, Antoine Murray, running a post. Great job. Great coverage in the deep. That was a long, long developing play. DB stayed with their man into the secondary. Great job. It was several crossing patterns. Everyone stayed with their man. Good job by the secondary. Smoke, he threw that ball 60 yards he in the did. air. <laughs> With no problem, with ease, with no problem. Second down and 10 from the 42. 91 seconds left here in the first half. Williams, pressure coming. Bazako is there, just missed him. But he could not get away from the last man coming to get him, and that was Ricardo Watson. Great job. Great job, great job. Can't ask for no more. Ricardo Watson all over the play that time. And we're going to get a timeout here with a minute 14 to go. 
in the first half of play. Again, Chris King, the vice president and director of athletics at Robert Morris University, will be joining me at halftime. And Ray will step away, and uh, we'll be chatting about some of the things happening here, some news uh, coming out of the university this week. And, of course, uh, I want to get Chris's reaction on how the team looks today, too. Definitely so. Uh, just what if, if we had free timeouts, uh, Rob Morris may decide to go to full timeout. Um, just thinking with them passing. That's a possibility maybe getting the ball back, but it doesn't look like it won't. All right, now they're just uh, winding the timeout time down on the clock. Morris in the lead. DeAndre Hicks with a great jump catch for the touchdown from 43 yards out from George Martin. Put the Colonials back in the lead, 14 to 7. Sean Porter caught a 12-yard strike from Quinton Williams for Howard's only touchdown of the game. And George Martin scored the first TD. That was back in the early part of the second period of play. That was a five-yard run on a quarterback sneak. Yeah, 116 on the clock. They could hold him right here. Screen pass. Hunter making the grab. Chased down by Lorenzo Yuleine, who makes a nice open field tackle Great out on the tackles. left flat at the 48-yard line. Great job. Timeout by Robert Morris. They get an opportunity to maybe do. Um, Two-minute drill. They hold them. Colonials looking sharp out there defensively here today and now uh, trying to be smart with the clock. Great job by Rob Morris today, you know, for the first half. Bend but don't break. They did give up a couple of plays but didn't hold their heads down. Still getting after it. Um, on every play. They look fresh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? After the second game of the season, what they went through last week, not getting the first game of the season against Dayton played. Um, they look fresh. They look like they want, they have the, um, the mojo. They want to get after it. I'm looking to prove something today, obviously. Mm -hmm. Much of the defense was on the road trip last week at Central Michigan. It was more of the offense that was missing. So, you know, it is a, a good step, a good second step for the, this group in particular, although there were some members of the team on that side of the ball who weren't there that wasn't because there. of the COVID protocol last week as well. Yeah, Coach Clark told us, you know, he had to, you know, shuffle the lineup, putting a lot of, you know, freshmen, first-time players in, in, in line, against Central Michigan in that big environment. Uh, that's, a, that's a big ask, you know. Um, I don't care what level you play. Well, that's a, that's a team that the week – previous to meeting Robert Morris, played Missouri tough, yep. lost by 10 against Missouri, and then they played LSU the following, the following week. week. It's just incredible. All right, it's fourth down, and the Colonials want to get the ball back. Here's the punt by Dylan West. Fair catch called for, wow. but this one will bounce mm. all the way into the end zone for the touchback. You got lucky on that one. Yes, they did. Howard was swarming, and they just couldn't get to the football. He has to catch that. Fair catch it the best way he can. So the Colonials will start from the 25, or check that, the 20, I should say, after the punt touchback, and they'll have less than a minute with which to work. They're up 14 to 7, Robert Morris is, and they're going to break the huddle off the sideline. I'm sure the coaches will probably give him two plays, you know, check one, check two, try to work the sidelines as fast as they can. Martin, Hicks, and Brown all to the right side this time. Tight end is also right in the slot. And now Dylan Smith comes in motion left. Elijah Jackson will follow him. And Jackson turns the corner to the tight side of the field and rushes out after about a two-and-a-half, three-yard gain. Stepped out of bounds, stopped the clock. 54 seconds left. Positive gain. Martin came to the sideline and now gets a play back in. Slots to both sides this time for Robert Morris and Elijah Jackson in the backfield to the right shoulder of George Martin. Martin has time, has protection, pumps, pumps again. Now fires, and it's going to be incomplete. Thrown behind Elijah Jackson, who sprinted out of the backfield to help out the QB over on the near sideline and around the 38-yard line. And in coverage that time for Howard was Sadiq Salau. 
a backup linebacker who's played a lot here today, and we expected that out of him. Yeah, it, it, definitely a great job by the defense. Didn't let anyone get behind him. I would like to see uh, George be able to come out and maybe break the pocket a little bit. Maybe throw. He did throw away, would stop the clock, but there was nothing there. Maybe tuck it. Maybe try to run. You still have additional timeouts that we could have used. Here's Jackson, a nice seal block, and great Jackson job. cuts to the sideline, gets the first down, and is run out at the 33-yard line. Defensively, it was Kenny Gallup who pushed him out of bounds, but Elijah had room to roam, and the Colonials moved the chains. First down. They're going to have to take a shot um, maybe here, maybe the next play, but sooner or later, going to have to try to go, for, go up top a little bit. Hicks and Brown to the right. Slot left as well. Double wise cover two. From the 33. No Martin. Blitz. Right there in the scene. Oh. And the catch just not made this time by DeMonte Martin over on the left side as he was coming back to help his quarterback after the pump fake. If he just would have checked out to his second receiver, he had the uh, tight end right up the seat. Although the linebacker did do a good jam, released him, could have dumped it right over here. He had a wide open, wide open guy right there. You're already working on film for next week, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's definitely different when you're watching it um, live versus having to sit behind the screen and do it. I'm just glad you're not hitting people out there. I remember <laughs> what it looked like when you did that. Those are the good old days. Second down and 10 for Martin and the Colonials. 36 ticks left. They pull out on the pressure. Step up. Oh. And this one is thrown over the head, fortunately, of the defensive back who was covering on the play, and that was Elijah Coleman. The intended receiver who was coming back for the football was DeMonte Martin. He and George Martin were not on the same page. Yeah, he tried his best to climb in the pocket, but he climbed into where his offensive linemen were blocking. If he just would have climbed straight up, he would have been fine. Right now it's third down and 10 for the Colonials. Incomplete pass, of course, shuts the clock off with 31 seconds left. Sure they could have. Dylan Smith is the tight end sliding right. There it is. Martin fakes to Jackson and runs. And George gets out of bounds at the 36-yard line. That's a gain of only about three yards. I wish he could have did that two plays ago. <laughs> that would have been a great <laughs> opportunity for him. But hey, get some positive yards. I'm sure they're probably going to let the play clock go down since there's, uh, what, 24 seconds left? Before they turn it? Yeah, but 24 on the game clock, and he, yep, he it is fourth down. Of, he shouldn't have went out of bounds. He should have tried to stay in bounds since he wasn't going to get um, any additional yards. It would have been nice. Play clock is at 10. Game clock is shut off right now at 24 seconds. Here is George Souders the third who pops a nice high ball. Fair catch is going to be called for and hauled in by Knighton back at the 24-yard line. And Howard will have a couple of last cracks with 18 seconds left in the first half. Hey Chris, uh, Don't forget, uh, First Citizens Bank brings you our halftime stats and highlights. First Citizens Bank, forever first. That's coming up at halftime. We'll also check the out-of-town scoreboard presented by the Sheraton Pittsburgh Airport and official hotel partner of the RMU Colonials. Chris, you just said it early. He could throw a 60-yard pass, yeah. I mean, with ease. So if they can do one play quick out to the out to the um, out-of-bounds out, out out quick pass to get a play next, or they may just... They may just let it go into halftime. They're not, not giving up a different play, but never know. One thing, Smoke, it appears from our vantage point that he'll have the wind at his back, so that's mm -hmm. going to help him a little bit too. I think you can get two plays out of the 18. Work the sideline. Here he goes. Williams out of the pocket. Flag is down. There's going to be a holding call here. And the sidearm oh. pass goes incomplete, intended for a Hawthorne. And now the passer, Quentin Williams, shaking up on the bit, play. Little ginger right there. I think he went down awkwardly on his shoulder. Also flag on the play. Clock stops Holding. with 12 seconds Offense left. Number 72. Ten yard penalty. It's still first down. The flag is against Howard for holding. Injury time out in the field. But the big concern right now is Quentin Williams shaking up on the play. Yeah, he tried. It looked like he tried to. Good that he's walking off. He'll have to come out for 
one play here. They have 12 seconds left. They should be able to squeeze two plays in here, perhaps. Right now, it looks like Howard's just going to take the snap and take the knee here, Smoke. Yep. And without their starting quarterback in there, that's probably the smartest thing the smartest they could thing. do. And we're going to wind down to zero here with the halftime score, Robert Morris, 14, and Howard, 7. Hey, I mean, it, 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 definitely action back. Good ball game here at Joe Walton Stadium in the West Hills of Pittsburgh, Moon Township, PA. Halftime is next right here on ESPN+. Plus. First fall Saturday of the year here in 2021 and a beautiful afternoon right now here at Joe Walton Stadium. They're telling us that uh, we may see some rain later on in the afternoon, but so far so good. A delightful day. 14 to 7. Robert Morris is in the lead over the Howard Bison here in this non-conference football game. I'm Chris Shovlin. Chris King is the vice president and director of athletics here at Robert Morris University. He joins us to chat at halftime right now. Chris, we need to start with uh, what we're looking at here today. What a great crowd here in the stands at Joe Walton Stadium. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a better day. Great weather. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, really, really uh, strong attendance today. You know, the band's out here playing, team's playing well, up 14-7 at the half, and couldn't ask for a better home season over. I know that student engagement is a big priority here at Robert Morris University, and obviously with the students in the stands here today, back on campus, thank goodness, 
it feels good. Yeah, it's, you know, one of the things we wanted to do last year, uh, with, but with the pandemic, of course, with the season being canceled, is we had a lot of plans for campus and student engagement opportunities. And so we're actually unveiling a lot of those for the first time this year. And, you know, we had a group of 250 freshmen uh, as part of a first-year student experience that actually formed a tunnel for the team wow. when they first came out. And so we got a lot more uh, ideas for the students, uh, campus, as well as a, a lot of great ideas and promotions for the community uh, as we get into the rest of the season. I have to ask you your thoughts on the game so far today, too. It's been entertaining. Well, uh, any time that we're up on the scoreboard, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy as an athletic director. But, no, Coach Clark's done a great job. It's a very difficult time to be a head coach yeah. uh, right now with dealing with the COVID protocols and, you know, what we've had to deal with the last three weeks. And, and he's just done a, you know, a tremendous job, uh, you know, during this time period. And, you know, we think of this as sort of our first game of the season, um, you know, based off of uh, what, what occurred the two of the first three weeks. So, Speaking of the COVID protocol, I know you were on the road trip last weekend, two weekends ago, really, because we had the bye week last week at Central Michigan. That was tough sledding going up against an FBS club and then going in there so undermanned. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see everybody back here. Yeah, it is. You know, I was up uh, up in the athletic director's box, and I was looking at the four deep, and there was a couple names. I'm like, okay, I don't see these guys on the four deep. And, <laughs> You know, you can't, you can't go down that many starters, yeah. um, you know, and, and had playing so many true freshmen uh, against, you know, an FBS program. But, you know, again, you know, those are important, important games of the program as far as getting those, uh, getting the checks to, to really be able to fund the program to be able to make that and elevate the program uh, as we want to go from the NEC into the Big South Conference. You know, we've been talking a lot about uh, the fact that We've seen so many changes here at Robert Morris University. Smoke Thomas came here yeah. when they didn't have a chin strap, they didn't have a helmet, and they had to go out and get them. And now we have a, a football team that's competitive in the FCS. You were a student here as well, and I know times have changed since you were here as an undergrad. Yeah, you know, I graduated in 1994, and I was here, you know, for that first uh, year after Coach Walton was hired, yeah. and I was actually an intern uh, in compliance, and that was when the NCAA Clearinghouse was coming out, and I think they had like 150 uh, uh, football <laughs> players, you know, you know, it was, was non-scholarship. Yeah. So, I, I got to know Coach Walton and Bad Rad uh, real well because uh, they were always in the compliance office with uh, a new freshman or transfer that they were trying to get into school. Speaking of Coach Walton, after the game today, there will be a ceremony about uh, 30 minutes after the ball game uh, to remember Coach Walton who passed over the summer, and we all have so many fond memories of him. Yeah, I know it's, uh, you know, I mean, his, his wife Patty is here today, and you know, we've got a, a great group uh, of speakers, including yourself and, and former players. Uh, the coach Walton meant so much to, to everybody, and um, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, we're we're we're, we're happy to honor him, um, and uh, you know, he's meant so much uh, as the first you know, head football coach of this program. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Speaking of coaches, and, and quickly, I know you have a new member of the coaching staff here now. We do. You know, we lost Coach McMinn. Uh, you know, he's yep. been a top twenty uh, head coach with the men's lacrosse program over the last couple of years, and he had, had a great opportunity for he and his family to take that coaching job at Utah. And, so we were fortunate. Uh, we went through a very quick search because, you know, it was, it was you know, timing was um, not a, uh, <laughs> the best of timing with, you know, the academic year starting. But we hired uh, Craig McDonald, associate head coach uh, at the University of Massachusetts, UMass. They're a top 15 lacrosse program, and um, he comes very highly regarded from some of the top head coaches uh, in lacrosse, um, college lacrosse. And so we're really excited about getting him here next week and, and really kind of elevating the uh, lacrosse program as we move into the Atlantic Sun Conference in our first year as a member. All right, we'll put them right to work, no doubt about Absolutely. that. Chris Absolutely. King, the Vice President and, and Athletic Director here at Robert Morris University. We'll come back and take a look at stats and highlights next right here on ESPN+. Plus.
Well, the Robert Morris Colonials lead the Howard Bison by a score of 14 to 7 at halftime with the Hall of Famer Ray Thomas. I'm Chris Shovlin. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We saw some electricity in this first half from both these ball clubs. Exactly. Uh, here, here you have Quentin rolling out to his right, tossing the ball, but it was intercepted. We talked about that, making sure that he protects the ball. That was Lorenzo Uline. And now Martin on the quarterback keeper. A nice little hesitation. It was, and the defense was not prepared. Caught a quick quarterback draw, takes it to the end zone, six. All right, Colonials leading at that point of the game. Here comes Williams again, a beautiful strike into the end zone to Tayshawn Porter from about a dozen yards away. Great job by Quinn rolling out to his left, delivering the ball on a dime. Great receiver, great catch. And George Martin wound up and threw the long ball deep downfield. This was a beautiful jump catch. And DeAndre Hicks said, I'm going all the way. Oh, you know, high pointed, box him out, mossed him, go get it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to call it, he did it on that play. Great catch, great receiver, great time. And we're 14 to 7 at halftime. Robert Morris in the lead over Howard in the first time these two football teams had ever gotten together on the same field. Time to take a look at the halftime stats brought to you by First Citizens Bank forever first. And those numbers are fairly equal. They are um, balanced all throughout. Same amount of third down attempts have an opportunity for first downs. I wish that Robert Morris had a couple more, but to be honest, they were at a great place compared to what they did last week. Yeah, the big stat is the score, and that's 14 to 7. Bobby Moe on top of Howard right now. You could see uh, the passing yards for Howard. Uh, Quinn Williams really putting it up in the air. Robert Morris uh, uh, still uh, right there in the ballpark as far as total yardage is concerned. But uh, this is uh, pretty much an even game, except Robert Morris has a touchdown lead. And it looks good on the Robert Morris end because they're balanced. You have a nice balanced run game, nice balanced pass game. Obviously, the running yards are allowing the passing yards to open up the field to go down the And again, our halftime stats brought to you by First Citizens Bank Forever First. Spoke and I are coming back. We'll take a look at what's coming up in the second half next, right here on ESPN+. Plus.
Beautiful day here at the Joe, as we call it, at Robert Morris University. And you can see the Howard Bison making their way back out of the locker room, down the steps, onto the playing surface, getting set to start the second half of play. Robert Morris in the lead here, 14-7. to While we have a moment, let's check the out-of-town scoreboard presented by the Sheraton Pittsburgh Airport, an official hotel partner of the RMU Colonials. First of all, the Penn State Nittany Lions leading Villanova 17-3. That game in the third period of play. Uh, down the road from us, about uh, 17 miles or so, at Heinz Field, the Pitt Panthers taking it out on New Hampshire today. 49-7, Pitt in the lead. That game also at halftime. The Panthers smarting after their loss to Western Michigan last week. And in the Big South, only one other game being played uh, involving a Big South team this afternoon. The Monmouth Hawks in action. They're down 14-7 to, to Holy Cross at halftime. Again, the out-of-town scoreboard presented by the Sheraton Pittsburgh Airport and official hotel partner of the RMU Colonials. Robert Morris with a 14-7 halftime advantage coming back for the third period next on ESPN+. Plus. Howard trailing Robert Morris 14 to 7 at the intermission here in the West Hills of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Home of the Robert Morris Colonials. This campus in Moon Township, PA, just off the Pittsburgh International Airport runway. Chris Shutlin and Dr. Ray Thomas on the call here this afternoon. The Colonials are going to have the ball to start the second half. Great atmosphere. See if we can have a, another great half of football. Uh, first, firstly, definitely, first half definitely lived up to what we expected today. 
Raji Woodson is ready to kick off for the Howard Bison. Knuckler. And a short hop at the 15. And a good return for the Colonials out to about the 36-yard line by Jordan Johnson, the backup running back, a senior. Well, that's a good start to the half. George Martin in the offense getting set to march back out there on the field. Line of scrimmage will be the 35 officially. 14-7, the Colonials lead by a touchdown. And Martin's done a pretty good job marching the offense so far today. He has. And, you know, once again, the offensive line needs to stay consistent with uh, applying pressure to the defensive line of Howard. Elijah Jackson gets the handoff, follows the blocks, almost slipped a tackle and got dragged mm -hmm. down from the uh, elbow by Aaron Walker <laughs> that time, the defensive back who just reached in there and got him. If he could have got right past that last one, I think he would have broke that one. Gain of six for the Colonials on that first down play in the first play of the second half. Jackson will trot off and replacing him in the backfield will be Jonathan Wynn, who we've seen a few times today. Wide slot to the right side. Tight end is also on the right for the Colonials. And they're going to keep it on the ground. Here comes Wynn. And Wynn puts his head down and gets the first down and a little bit more on a second effort run. First down, catching them in that that, that cover two uh, defense, making sure that linebacker comes up and make that tackle. Good run. Colonials move the chains. It'll be first down and 10 for Robert Morris. The ball sitting at the 47-yard line, just underway in quarter number three. Stop, slots to both sides this time for Martin. Wynn stays in to play running back. He'll move the tight end. Win again. Ooh, Win slammed did. down after That's a two-yard carry that time. And he made a nice cut back to the middle. It looked like he was going to sprint that wide right, <laughs> but he decided to cut <laughs> in. That DJ, he, said, he said hello to him. He, he, <laughs> met, he met his maker on that one. You cut back against the grain. You best to make sure you keep your head on the swivel. You may get your head knocked off. That was a great pursuit. That looked like one of the hits you used to lay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. I'm old enough to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me even more. <laughs> Thanks. Here's Martin on the rollout. He's going to tuck it. and run. That and shot. a slide to the 40-yard line, a colonial first down. Mm -hmm. He just got to the stick and then pulled the legs up and slid at the 42-yard line. And, and we talked about it earlier, Chris, um, in the second half when I said that naked boot is going to yep. be available, and there it is. Great job by a quarterback keeping that ball. Great block it downfield as well by the wide receiver. That line up front doing some work, too. Trevor Hicks, Dylan Young, Trevor Renfro, Hayden Barron, Bussy Romaley. Tight end in there, Dylan Smith. High snap, Martin Controls. This is Elijah Jackson, and look at him Ooh, continuing to dig. Yard, tough yard. That's, that, that's a nice, tough five right there. And we're mainly blocking right out in front of him once again. He can continue to get five off the first down off the top. You might as well keep running it up the gut. Second and five now for the Colonials. Jack Odokobin over to the wide left side. Here's Jackson again. Here Finds a hole, 30, 25. And is. high steps his way to the sideline, out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Well, they got something on that right side right there. They definitely got something on that right side. These stretch blocking, they're not going straight ahead, Chris. Mm -hmm. they, they, the offensive line, they're doing stretch blocking, which is great because it keeps them on, but it shows how athletic our offensive line really is. And they've stepped up the pace here, too, Smoke. They're running the football right away. Exactly. This time, Jackson gets run out of bounds on the near side on a good tackle by Kenny Gallup. we got a little extracurricular down at the bottom. Hmm. Um, too bad 71's got to come out for a play. He took his helmet off. That's Bussy Romaley. The redshirt senior has played so well during his career here at Robert Morris in the trenches. It's going to be second down and 10 after no game. Yeah. 
Now, two to the left, a wingman to the right. Play action fake. Oh, Martin <laughs> looking deep. End zone. Sebby D. <laughs> and out of bounds on the catch that time. Oh, that out and up, coach. That up. Ooh. Out of bounds is the ruling on the play, even though the catch was landed by DeAndre Hicks on an acrobatic move. He was over the white line. Let's see where he lands. Yep, foot came down on the chalk. Third down and 10 now for Robert Morris. The ball sitting at the Howard 21-yard line. Sammy D used to love running that route right there. <laughs> Sam Dorsett, sudden, Sam. sudden Sam Dorsett. Uh, he loved that route. Now it's third down and 10, as we said. Jordan Johnson in to protect Martin, and now we get whistles. Timeout was called. Prior to the snap, first charge timeout. Robert Morris, 30 seconds. Thank you. I think Robert Morris called the timeout. We'll figure that out when we come back. 14 to 7, Robert Morris. It's third down and 10 when we return. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Big things are happening this year across the south, from the mountains to the coast. The fast are getting faster. The strong are getting stronger. And the best is getting better. Get ready to raise your expectations. Get ready for something big. Ingles, a proud sponsor of Big South Football. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Biggest lead of the game has been seven, and Robert Morris has had that seven-point lead twice now. 14 to seven, they're up. This is a huge play right here, Ray. This is big, you know, third down and 10. You have to have some positive yardage on this play. We're not looking to settle for a field goal. Let's see what they'll do. Here's Martin. Standing tall, throwing to the end zone and overthrew everybody on that play. Great defense. It's great defense. Closest man to the ball for Robert Morris was Jonathan Wynn, who is coming out of the backfield, and now it's fourth down and 10. Line of scrimmage, the 21-yard line. The Colonials are going to go for the field goal here from veteran Nick Baseglia. He'll have it spotted by George Souders III at the 28-yard line. This will be a 38-yard attempt, the angle left to right. Here's the snap. Placement is down. Baseglia puts his foot into it, wind aided, but it's off to the right and no good. The Colonials fail to convert. And we'll turn the ball over on downs after the missed field goal attempt by Nick Baseglia from 38 yards away with 10 and a half minutes left in the third. Hey, that's a win. That's a win for the defense right there. Um, I, I, they, if they can build, if the offense can build off this defensive momentum shift right here, huge play, huge stop. You can't ask for no more than that. Howard takes over at its own 21-yard line. 
Quentin Williams leads his offense back out onto the field. Good to see him back on the field. He was shaken up earlier, and it is good to see him back. What a talent he is. Williams in the pistol, Hunter to his right shoulder, three men to the right side. He's going to pitch one out over there to the right, and that ball is complete. Coming out of there, a little bubble screen to Hawthorne, and he makes the catch and drives it forward for a, a few yards. It's a good way to fight through those two blocks. Corner can't be a soft corner on the outside. Second down and about eight. Williams throws near side, and that ball is going to be complete, but immediately taken down will be Tayshawn Porter, who has the only touchdown for Howard in this ball game today. But Porter is shy of the line to gain. He'll be stopped at the 30 yard line, a yard shy of the stick. Good rollout. Good manager with third down. Crowd starts getting into it a little bit, trying to implore the Colonial defense. Here comes Hunter this time, and Hunter will blast through off the right side for the first down before he's stopped by Matthew Holmes and Anello Bazzacco. Great cut by the running back going side. Was pinned to right. Wasn't going to be able to catch that first down from going outside. Cut it back in against the grain. Pick up that first down. And a few who's and Nas a little further downfield. Lorenzo Uline got tied up with tight end Brennan Brown. It looks like he's trying to draw a little bit of a person, person to file on, on, on offense. First down and 10 now for Howard. Play action. Throw downfield is going to be tipped up into the air and incomplete. The intended receiver for Howard was Thomas B. B, the tight end. He's actually the backup tight end who uh, backs up Christian Carter, who is out with an injury today. So B got the start for Howard, but that ball was overthrown. Great job by Jacob White playing that, uh, that too deep coverage, making sure that he's on top of that tight end on the scene didn't get food on the outside route as well. Again, off the play fake. And right. this one, a swing pass out to the right side. is going to be complete and another first down for, for Hawthorne, the wide receiver, the sophomore. And now they move the sticks again, and Howard is up to midfield. They've been executing that, that running back outside of the flats all day long, and we still have failed to adjust. Whoever's in the flat on that route, you either they're playing cover three and now outside linebacker need to get into uh, the flats, but he's not doing that right now. In Robert Morris territory at the 47 yard line, Hunter will get the handoff. He'll spin out of one tackle, but he'll be brought down hard by Jacob White, the safety that you just mentioned, the redshirt senior. Good pressure by the defensive end to make him have to turn that ball back inside, allowing his friends to come and make the clean up that tackle. If they gained anything, it was only the length of a football. So it looks like it's going to be second down and 10 again as we've crossed the eight minute mark here in the third period of play. The Colonials ahead here at Robert Morris this afternoon over Howard, 14 to 7. Trips. Williams looking long. Ooh, just evaded a sack and then galloped forward for just a couple of yards and was brought down from behind on the play by Izon Pulley, the defensive lineman. Another redshirt senior, 6'4", 295. Great job of the, of the middle linebacker getting into the hook to the curl, making sure that comeback route, because he was definitely looking for that inside route, but our linebacker jumped it. Third and nine. Big play here. Williams. Over the middle, oh. complete. But shy of the first down, the catch made by Hawthorne, but he hauled it in at the 40 and got attacked right away by the secondary for the Colonials, and they stop him shy of the first down marker. I'm sure they're going to go for it on this play. I think they was trying to get half of it, and then to knowing that they were going to go for it. 
forward on fourth. Wow, great initial hit that time by Robert Morris's Miles Hayes, the safety, and then two other Colonial D-backs came in to close it down. Fourth down, big play. Fourth down, Williams is going to go for it. He's going to roll, roll left. Trying to get the first down, and he just evades the tackle and traipses his way to the near boundary line out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Oh, Ricardo Watson was oh so close to bringing him down. Oh, man. I mean, we really haven't seen him run all day. Today he has that opportunity. It's right, right there for the taking. Oh, shoelace. It's away for making that tackle. Williams had the angle on Ricardo Watson that time, though. Mm. Broke containment on the outside. Good run by the quarterback. The drive stays alive for the Howard Bison. Williams bouncing, throwing over the middle for the post, and it's incomplete. Oh, he had Antoine Murray open for a split second. He did. Once again, that seam route, they've been working the seam all day, either the flats or the seams that they've been trying to get that one-on-one -on -one, um, matchup with the linebacker or strong safety for one of these inside wide receivers. Second down and 10 now for Howard. The ball sitting at the Bobby Moe 24-yard uh, line. Well, Run play. And a little bit of a hole opened up and taking advantage of it was Josiah Krutz. Back up running back. Good positive run. Krupp again brought down short of the front marker. And Howard has the football at the Colonial 15. They've got to get just inside the 15, almost to the 14 to get the first down. And it will be the quarterback, Williams. He has it and bounces his outside and is knocked down at the 11. Yeah, he has to, you would, would love for him to come and be a force, which he was just now, but if he could have just wrapped him up, he would have been able to hold him getting that first. Now it's going to be first down and goal to go for Howard. Ball sitting at the Robert Morris eight. I'm, I'm sorry, let me correct that. The Robert Morris 13, I should say. It's first down and 10. First down and 10. Here's Hunter running the football. Finding an opening, breaking a tackle, breaking another, spinning his way down to the three-yard line, and now it's going to be first down and goal. Good, strong, good, strong run by the running back, keeping his, keeping his legs churning. And look at the tempo here, Smoke. They've intensified it. Oh, Williams finds a wide open right side, and he's going to chop his way in for the touchdown. Quentin Williams on the the long run, if you can call a three-yard touchdown run a long run, he had a long way to go. He was yes, deep in that did. backfield. Yes, he did. But when it came down to put his shoulders down, put his head down, and make a play, he made a play. 4.30 left in the third period of play. Howard can tie the ball game up for the second time today with a successful point after by Faraji Woodson. But right now we have an injured Colonial, so we'll take a timeout. Again, four and a half left in the third. Robert Morris by one right now. It could be tied when you come back.
Getting set to go for the extra point kick. Hampton trying to tie this ball game up. 14-13, the Colonials in the lead right now, but Quinton Williams just ran it in from three yards out. The injured player for the Colonials was Garrett Fairman. He got up and came off on his own, and that's good to see. Right now, the play of the day is this one, the extra point kick, and Faraji Woodson poke it through, tie this game up. It's been a long time between the touchdown and the point after. Ooh, and he gets what? it blocked. <laughs> How did I know something crazy was going to happen? <laughs> did you call that? Chris? I just, I can't believe I called that. <laughs> it was a long time after the touchdown. We had the injury timeout. Mm -hmm. We had the television timeout. And then they kick the extra point and the Colonials get a piece of it. Might have been Lorenzo Uline. Let's see if we can see it on the replay here. Tough to read those red numbers on the blue Under Armour jerseys with the sun shining today, but 42. who do you think it is, right? 42. If it's 42, that's Matthew Holmes. Matthew Holmes. Holmes. Yeah. Unblocked, too. He was came right through the middle. All right. The bottom line is that might have been the play of the game. At least it has been so far with yes. 430 to go here in the third period. And there's a lot of football to be played, but this is a one-point lead for Robert Morris. It is. And, I, and I'm just sitting here saying that, wow, this is, you know, taking a little bit of extra time, like you said, which is normal once a touchdown is, is made, kick comes right on the field, kicks the, kicks the field goal, and everything is uh, – Everything is, is great, but it was a little bit of a delay on that. Now that same man, Woodson, drills it downfield, and it'll be a short kick, and the return from the 20 up to about the 31-yard line, and the Colonials will have healthy field position. Let's take a look at the touchdown again. Well, we're going to see the extra point first. Oh, yeah, that was a great stab at that ball. A great stab at that ball. We're going to take a timeout. 14-13, Robert Morris in the lead here in the third quarter on ESPN+. Plus. And now Pepsi presents what fans like because Pepsi knows what fans like. And I'll tell you what they like. They like sunshine, blue skies, and 
t-shirt weather on a fall afternoon and some football and I think they uh, the home fans at least like blocked extra points <laughs> make sure you pick up an ice cold refreshing Pepsi today Pepsi that's what I like all right a 14 13 lead for Robert Morris and the Colonials have the offense back out we're ready to go first down and 10 from the 31 yard line Let's see if they can get something going here they've got, got stalled last possession See if they can get back to what they were doing earlier in the quarter, early in the first half. George Martin out of Ringgold High School in Monongahela, Pennsylvania. You may understand that that's the same high school that Joe Montana attended. And that wasn't Montana handing off to Elijah Jackson. That was George Martin. <laughs> Something in the water out there. <laughs> Elijah picks up five yards on that run play. Yeah, something in the Monongahela River down there, huh? A little bit of magic, maybe? Second and five for Robert Morris, wearing the home blues. Jackson again. It's a reverse. Good block. And here comes. Good cut. The receiver turned runner. That is James Westry with a beautiful carry on the end around, and Westry moves the Colonials down to the Howard 35-yard line. Ooh, I wish all quarterbacks blocked like that. That was a great <laughs> job by, by QB1 right there. Put his, put his body on the line for this one. Now, you played with a couple of pretty good quarterbacks here. I know you were on the opposite side of the ball, but. I'm not sure if Timmy wanted to lay out a couple of blocks. He would get in the way, but, you know. Well, he was a big dude. He was real big, 6'6". Six, six. You can't teach that. Tim Levchick, of course, the guy we're talking about. Oh, a mishandled football. They were trying to go with that jet action once again, and Jalen Brown and George Martin just with a bad exchange. Martin had to cover it up back at the 39-yard line, so the Colonials lose four. Yeah, almost looked like Jalen Brown wasn't expecting to keep the ball. I know. Two thirty-seven to go. Running third quarter clock. Chris Shovlin on the call, along with Dr. Raymond Thomas, Smoke Thomas, out of Robert Morris fame back in the early days of Colonial football. Joining me for this, his first full season of Colonial football as Elijah Jackson carries the ball. While we have a moment, I want to thank Brian Clear for serving as uh, our color analyst on, on uh, the radio and on the web and, and the telecast that we've done for the last 11 years. Brian stepped away so he can spend more time with his daughter, Abby, who is becoming a star athlete in her own right, and that just speaks volumes about the character of Brian Cleary. Well, obviously, I know uh, going way back, back when Robert Morris University was Robert Morris College, and he was one of the um, originators from yep. the, the Colonial uh, football team. And, you know, just being able to step and try to fill those shoes uh, that he's left in legacy, and just not in his booth, but as a, um, you know, a real advocate of Robert Morris University with keeping the former alumni team together, um, assuring that our Facebook communication amongst all of us um, still remain the same. Uh, kudos to him wanting to spend more time with his family. I, I, I see his daughter and what she's been doing. Oh, I know. Um, you know, it, 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 her athletics, and obviously she's taken after her mother. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew you were going to go there. In all seriousness, uh, in all Brian, seriousness. Brian is going to be on the field with us after the ball game today for the Joe Walton yeah. tribute. We're Can't we're all going to take turns uh, just remembering our. Our coach, our architect. Yep. Yeah. Without him, uh, we, we wouldn't be here. He had a vision, and um, the vision came to fruition. And, you know, if I found out about it all the way out in New York City, it must, it must have stuck really well. Absolutely. All right, it's third down after the injury timeouts. Robert Morris with the ball. Oh, Ooh. Martin gives it off, and this time Elijah Jack. And bang, just bang. got slammed bang, by Quamir Jenkins, the 
the uh, the uh, linebacker. Bang, bang. Now, now that is what you call <laughs> filling the hole right there. I mean, you go to the well one too many times. <laughs> He'll come back dry. That's the, that's, that was a great way. Great stop. Great stop by the defense. I'm turning over the ball. That may be a little bit of a momentum shift right there. That was Sadiq Salau, my mistake. They have two number 38s, and that was Salau, who's played well here today, who got the big hit on Elijah Jackson. And now the Colonials have to punt, but they're able to pin Howard back deep down at the seven-yard line on the fair catch by Jabari Knighton. But Sadiq Salau with the biggest hit of the game. Yeah, that definitely delivered, delivering the blow, uh, point of attack, taking on a defender, Fighting through that, making the um, tackle for loss in the backfield, putting the stamp on that drive, uh, punt it. Here we go. Maybe Robin Morris can flip the field, seeing that they have to start in their uh, backed up in their own territory. All right, it's first down and 10. Howard with the ball. They're down by one. The Bison are with 119 left here in the third period of play. As we said, still plenty of football to go of here this afternoon, especially with this guy in a quarterback, Quentin Williams. And backed up near their goal line, they decide to protect that football and run it out of there with Jared Hunter. And we have another injury on the field here on the tackle of Hunter at the 12-yard line, and the Colonial shaken up on the play is Dante Bodie, the defensive tackle. And they're going to bring the training staff out to check on him right now. Mike Vettorino's crew has been busy this afternoon. Yeah. Get social with the Big South. Join the always growing network of Big South fans on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, and more. You can also follow the conference source for game updates and on-site championship coverage via Twitter at Big South Game Day. Follow, watch, like, and share with the Big South Conference. First big year in the Big South for Robert Morris, at least the first full year. We played some spring games yep. this past year and found out how tough that league's going to be. Love the NEC, but I don't believe it's the Big South. So no. it's definitely going. <laughs> it's definitely going to be an uphill, uh, uphill climb uh, for the university. Uh, but you know, we got the right people in, in place. Uh, recruiting is going very well. Um, staff, coaching staff, uh, about the kids. At the end of the day, are the men that are coming through our doors developing um, as key contributors to our society? Right, Chris? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You know, we're talking about all the alums who are here today and uh, fellows like you. I mean, you know, this this game of football can mold you into something spectacular, and I, I know that it's, it's happened for you. I yeah, know you owe this game quite a bit. A lot, and, it, and, it, and it's, there's no sport like it. And, you know, we talked about it earlier this week in our conference call with Coach is that bringing everyone together. You know, and we're all coming from a multitude of backgrounds, you know, but yet and still we all have a common goal when we cross these lines and we, you know, uh, break bread and we eat and we meet each other's family and yeah. we tailgate and uh, we take goods with losses. And these are the opportunities that you'll never forget. And you're going to grow and it's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. I mean, we're still talking. Happy to see him walking off. On yeah, the for own. sure. Look like he's holding his wrist a little bit. I know you're giving back to the game, too, because you're coaching your son's team. <laughs> you know I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I never knew that um, Coach Tinu, uh football would be so <laughs> nerve-wracking. I think I watch way too many film, too much film, but hey, this is, uh, I blame it on Coach Walton. Second down and four. And it's going to be another up. quarterback keeper. Quentin Williams has done that a couple of times today and picks up another needed first down before Buzz. Bazako hey, that's brings a, him down. That's a great way to look at it. The defensive end, you crash down, you keep. If he doesn't crash down, he stayed, you give it to the running back coming through the middle. Our D 
end crashed. He kept it right around the corner. Good way to pick up some easy yards right there. Now he, Quentin Williams, Quentin and the Williams, offense about that. has uh, has the offense with some room to work, and uh, they might loosen up the playbook a little bit here. Agreed. Play action fake. He's going to pass Great downfield. Close. It's going to be broken up. Great close on the ball, 2-1. Sidney Ottinger is that number 21, and he smacked that ball down to the turf on the sideline and broke it up. Great job. Little hand on the back, but it's a little bit after. <laughs> Great way to close on the ball. Ottinger, a tough character there, breaking up that pass. One thing they did great on that play for the defense, they, they had that the running back coming out of the backfield was covered at this time because that's where he wanted to check down to. Colonials blitzing. Williams picked it up and ran through it, and he comes to a slide at around the 26-yard line. Hey, I mean, Quinton, is, is, he's pulling it down. He's pulling it down, and he's running, using his legs. His second half, he was using his arm early in the game. If it's not open, tuck it and run. And we've come to the end of the th third period of play with that slide. 14-13, Robert Morris in the lead over Howard. And, of course, uh, again, the big memorial uh, for head coach Joe Walton coming after the game here today. What a special, special gentleman he was from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, to the University of Pittsburgh as a player and an All-American, and then into the National Football League with Washington, the Giants, of course, head coach of the New York Jets and uh, offensive coordinator with the Steelers. And then here to Robert Morris University, where he founded the football program. We will always and forever remember Coach Joe Walton. Football is the game of life, and it brings the community together. White, black, boys, girls, flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. Anybody can play. That family value, that brotherhood is everything. It's really what all it's about. It's just having a good time and being able to play. There's never been a better time to play. Hard work, a love for the game is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Fried chicken, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Big things are happening this year across the South, from the mountains to the coast. The fast are getting faster. The strong are getting stronger. And the best is getting better. Get ready to raise your expectations. Get ready for something big. Ingles, a proud sponsor of Big South Football.
The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Final set of 15 minutes is on the game clock. It's coming down to it. We're in the fourth quarter now. Ray, this is anybody's ball game. The Colonials lead by one. Looks like they got a little shift going. I'm trying to get that one-on-one -on -one up at the top. Coming on across. Can you pick him up? Quentin Williams. Ooh. Oh, a dart hooked out of the air beautifully that time by great Antoine play. Murray. Hey, great job by Quentin for keeping the play alive with his scrambling ability, getting to the outside until that wide receiver was able to come come open. Dropped it right, a dime right over the top of the DB's head. Oh, no. great go up and get it. Nice pass, great catch, Antoine Murray from Quinton Williams. It's first down and 10. They pass it out left it side is. this time, and the Colonials it see it coming, and they stop it. Hawthorne making the catch, and he stopped in his tracks as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Great job by the DB being a hard corner right there, fighting through the blocks, coming up, holding his ground, making the tackle. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. The ball sitting at the Robert Morris 47-yard line. Howard in possession. We are now one minute into the fourth and final period. Howard down one. Oh, a pass right through the hands of Hawthorne, the intended receiver, He's as he was crossing. crossing route. He's working that crossing route. Looks like arm used for the switch out. Third down and 10. Every play is now a big play. Everything. Some trips. A 14-13 Robert Morris lead on a blocked extra point after the Quentin Williams touchdown. The last one scored. And Ooh. now Williams hit. He breaks loose, but he's finally dragged down after about a gain of a yard and a half, but there are flags down in the backfield of Howard. Flag on the play. Personal foul, face mask. Personal Defense foul, face mask call against Robert Morris. It's a 15 yard penalty. That's a back in an automatic field. first down. That is a 15 yard penalty, and that keeps the drive alive for. The Howard University Bison as they advance the chains down to the 31 yard line. That's the line of scrimmage now. And the Colonial defense is forced to stay out there. That's a hard, that's a hard uh, call to get on that play. That was third down and 10, Chris. Gives them another set of downs. Into Robert Morris territory. Howard down one. Williams play action to Hunter. Throws long for the post. Flags are down, ball incomplete. The pass that time intended for Tayshawn Porter. He was covered nicely by Taven Harville, but the, the flag came out about 10 yards down from the line of scrimmage. An eligible receiver downfield. An eligible man downfield against Howard. It's a five yard penalty. It's first that down. That play took so long to develop that I, I, I think the offensive lineman was able to start beginning to drift down the field, especially when um, Quentin stayed in the pocket as long as it. That was a long development play. Five-yard penalty makes it first down and 15. Howard is backed up to the Robert Morris 36-yard line. Got to have it. Here's the running back, and this is Jared Hunter, and Hunter is slammed down Ooh. before he gets back, or I should say slammed down after a gain of about four. He could not get back to the original line of scrimmage, but good defensive play there again for the Colonials. A great fill again by the middle linebacker, staying home, trying to do a little bit of a, a delayed handoff. Subalani so Ma'ale'i in on the stop along with a bunch of his partners. Now it's second down and 10 after a gain of about four and a half. And, and this.
this is Quentin Three Williams, tackles. and Williams trying to run forward. Ricardo Watson got around his ankles and dragged him down. Still a four-yard pickup. Watson has been, he, he's been all over the ball today. Very active. I love his motor. Looking to see if he can get a tap out of He was tapping his head just down. Maybe he's a little bit <laughs> yeah. tight on I, I would be have to run it back and forth, but he's, uh, he, he definitely has a, a motor on him. Good-looking player. Good-looking player. Colonial switch up the package defensively now. It's third down and six. Here come that crossing route. Williams rifles Pushed one off. out to the right side. It's complete. And pulling that one down is Richie Ilaraza. And Ilaraza had to hang on and take the hit from yeah. Tim White, the safety. DB slipped and fell down on that play. Looked like there could have been a little bit of a rub route, but... Good throw by Quentin, giving his receiver an opportunity. Howard in the red zone right now. First down and 10 from the 12-yard line. Watch the tight. And we're going to get a flag. Somebody moved. Yep. False start against Howard. It might have been 72. False start. Offense number 62. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It's going to cost them five yards. This is going to drive head coach Larry Scott and his staff crazy. Yeah, this is the freshman. Got to hold your water down that low. Williams has Hunter off to his left shoulder. Colonial showing blitz. Hunter gets the football, rushes forward, and he is dragged down on the play by Supalani Ma'alei once again. That's the way you take on two. He had two guys and still fought through and made the tackle. That's a strong move right there, Chris. <laughs> Six one two ninety five graduate student Ma'alei making that big hit. And he yeah. can lay the lumber. That's all grown man right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, Fought up two blockers and still made the tackle. Second down and 13 for Williams and the Bison. Motion by Lorenzo Uline. Williams dribbled the ball back to himself and covered it up. Still a loss on the play. Back to the 20 yard line. Great play. When you need to have it, calling on the blitz right there, stayed home. Great job. Come up, make the tackle. Got that lucky bounce back to himself. Yes. Big time loss. Third down and long now for Howard. Watch for that inside route. Trips. That's a timeout's been called. Well, Howard wants to think about it here. They're down one. Can't mess around. Let's talk. Under 10 minutes left in the ball game here on ESPN Plus. Don't go anywhere.
Third down, 17 to go. Howard trailing 14-13. They have the ball deep in Robert Morris territory. Smoke, they called a timeout. What were they thinking? I'm thinking I want to get that inside route. It's We've been working. They've been working the seam route coming across the middle. That linebacker against that wide receiver is open. There it is there it over is. the middle, and it's complete right into the hands of Richie Elaraza. And they'll pick up yardage down to the 10. That's about a 10-yard gain still. Yeah. They have a chance to try to kick for it here. They're in field goal position, and they can take the lead with a, a three-pointer. You know what? I, you know, one thing that, you know, they, you know, Rack taught us in the past, is you got to get a jam just, you know, just to try to, um, you know, impede the receiver from going downfield. Spot of the ball just beyond the 17-yard line. It'll be almost a straightaway kick for Faraji Woodson, who missed one earlier from 38 today. To be a 27 yard attempt. Placement is down. Kick is on its way. It's end over end. It is good. And Howard takes the lead over Robert Morris. 16 14. Bison on top. Nine minutes to go. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Big things are happening this year across the south from the mountains to the coast the fast are getting faster the strong are getting stronger and the best is getting better get ready to raise your expectations get ready for something big ingles a proud sponsor of big south football whether you're a contractor or do-it-yourselfer, Sunbelt Rentals is committed to making it easy to get the tools and equipment you need. With a vast network of locations across the U.S. and Canada, no one brings more yes to your project. Our broad inventory and dedicated team of experts makes equipment rental absolutely available, positively reliable, and unquestionably easy. Visit sunbeltrentals.com to reserve your equipment or find a location near you. Go lighting. We make it happen. You know, we've been talking all game long about uh, the memorial for Coach Joe Walton. Of course, uh, following the game today, uh, we will be uh, streaming that live on the RMU Athletics YouTube channel. So we hope that uh, people will be uh, aware of that. And uh, want to remind you, if you are watching our game here this afternoon, you'll be able to go to the RMU Athletics YouTube channel to see. Uh, the ceremony honoring our first head coach, Joe Walton, and the namesake of this ballpark here. I don't know, Ray, you and I are, are going to be speaking. Ryan Cleary will be joining us. Jeff Sinclair, yeah. quarterback from the 2010 team, and, of course, uh, Joe's uh, wife, Patty, will be here with us as well, along with Ed Nicholson, the former president wow. of Robert Morris University, who was here when they announced that they were going to start playing football here. I know. It's, it, it's nuts. I can remember back in the days when they was trying to figure out what to call the state. <laughs> <laughs> not a hard choice. No, no, not at all. Here's a return coming out of the end zone for the Colonials. After Woodson's kick went two yards into the end zone, and Robert Morris will have the ball back at the 22-yard line, first down and 10, and that's where they're going to start things off here. George Martin's got his work cut out for him now. We have plenty of time, 8.56 to go in the fourth period, but for the first time today, Howard has the lead. Yeah, I mean, this is where you make your money. Um, 
your QB1 for the reason. Everyone likes these big time moments. Uh, um, it's manageable. Just don't do anything to take you out of a possible field goal if you can get some um, additional positive yards. First place is always key. Big defensive struggle all day long here today. Let's see if the Colonial offense can come alive again here. And uh, Elijah Jackson <laughs> turns the right corner and gets yeah. slammed as soon as he does. A huge hit there by Jabari Knighton. Yeah, he's special. Uh, it, it, he, his nose for the ball is great. He comes up and fills. Uh, I do believe Coach was talking about him this week, right? Mm -hmm. He had a, a press conference and said um, he definitely has that potential to make it on the next level. Second down and six after the hit by Dion Harry. And now Martin, two-step drop, little bubble screen, nothing there, and the Colonials will lose two yards. Even with the pass completion to DeAndre Hicks that time, the Colonials couldn't push forward, and now it's third down and eight yards to go. And... Howard's defense has come up biting. Yeah, they definitely have their their um, eyes in the backfield right now. It will be a good opportunity. Maybe you can do a pump go. Uh, maybe get the, the the DBs guessing and trying to jump a route. Who knows? Right now they have their eyes in the backfield right now. Martin it goes. Pocket it goes. breaks down, but he throws complete <laughs> over the middle, and it's there caught. Is. There by DeMonte Martin and the Colonials come up with a huge first down out to their own 46 yard line. There it, there, there it was. He had that pump to that short route, got the safety biting. Wide receiver comes right behind him, seam route. Joe Walton special right there. <laughs> <laughs> I like how DeMonte Martin actually almost came to a skidded stop exactly. to reach back and grab yep. that ball. And that's what happens when you have aggressive safeties. And they're jumping on those short routes to see if they can make a big play. You slide one right behind them. Chris Charles, the lone wideout in a tight set. Martin fakes the handoff. Fires downfield of the tight end, and it's caught at the 45-yard line. Hauling that one in for Robert Morris is Moss Sacramento, the redshirt junior. Tight end lag coming through. Always open on the back end. Another Coach Walton. <laughs> well, he was a tight end. He oh, loved that. He loved that position. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I'm back in practice again. You think Bernard Clark might have found the old playbook? Hey, listen, if it's, if it's not broke, <laughs> still trying to fix it. Second down and one. Colonials on the march right now. Here's Martin giving off Elijah Jackson. Here it is. Jackson has the first down. Tight quarters there, but he got what he needed. Trap. one of those patient runs we have to allow the blocks to take shape and looking like Sammy D coming down that line right now. <laughs> he wears Sammy D's number I'm surprised Sammy <laughs> Sam Dorsett hasn't made a call up here <laughs> first down and 10 now Robert Morris with the football and the clock is under six minutes and the clouds are starting to gather Here's the give. It's going to be Elijah Jackson. He tried to jump through the line of scrimmage that time, but Great there was play. nothing doing a super play by 97. Jevin Jackson, the defensive lineman, a senior for the Howard University Bison. He was not going to be blocked on that stretch. He was able to maintain, couldn't get out there. Great job. Great force. Loss of one, second down and 11. Clock spinning, 524 to go. As the sun goes down. Mm-hmm. Clouds are building. We knew the rain was going to move in here. 16-14, Howard in the lead. Robert Morris with the ball. Martin with a backpedal. Throws it out right side and has his man complete for a gain of about six. Making that grab, Chris Charles. Colonials looking at third down and four from the Howard 35-yard line. Yeah, he definitely wants to see if he's going to continue to jump that, that, that route right there. Once again, try to slide somebody, sneak somebody right up the backside. J 
chip away. Control the clock. Slots to both sides. Martin. Steps up and throws over the middle, complete, and another first down for the Robert Morris Colonials to DeAndre Hicks, who makes the grab and stays alive to get that first down. Just like you said, Chris, they want him jumping on that, and you slide, the, slide him right through the cross route. Great play, great read. Aaron Walker was riding him and brought him down, but not until DeAndre Hicks found the marker. Be patient, don't be in a rush. Under four minutes to go now. The Colonials down two. Here he comes. Elijah Jackson turning the corner and stutter stepping his way to the sideline. Sweet. He'll pick up close to five. <laughs> we, used to be, we used to watch film on Monday and we used to go with those quick sweet. <laughs> you have those two big linemen come six, seven. What are you going to do as a DB? You're only like 5'8". You got a decision to make. <laughs> That's a business decision right there. <laughs> All right, now the Colonials trying to bring the business to Howard. Second down, five yards to go. Tight end goes in motion over to the right side. That is Sacramento. A little cross buck, and we've got a run play by Elijah Jackson once again. Good to see Jackson Back in this lineup as he could not play last week due to the COVID protocol, but he's shy of the first down marker. And Robert Morris is looking at third down and one. Howard will call a timeout here with 3.07 left on the fourth quarter clock. The Bison lead, 16-14. Robert Morris trying to close the deal. Come back. We'll find out if they can do it right here on ESPN+. Plus. We're in a two-point ball game. Howard leads 16-14. Robert Morris is on the march. Ray, that was a smart timeout. Very intelligent by the Bison. Yeah, I think he's, he recognized that his um, D lineman was a little bit tired. They want to just get organized. Listen, out of arm you in that huddle, I'm telling the running backs, hold on to the ball. Possess the ball. Two hands. Don't give it up. We How about something here? Uh, this a little pop pass to DeAndre Hicks. He's going to turn the corner. He's going to run in Ooh. for the Robert Morris touchdown on the jet sweep action. George Martin, almost like a little slap pass in basketball, pushed it forward. Hicks was there. He circled around to the right side, and it's a score. Man, that was a great call right there. Great call. They have been pounding it, pounding it, pounding it up the middle. Catch him outside with the speedy receiver coming in reverse, and Great block by the outside tight end from Holen and sealing that corner. 
Going to the wide side of the field, Chris. You can't ask for more than that. Every point important. And with 3.01 to go here in the football game, Nick Masegli is on to add the point after. The Colonials have a four-point lead right now. And Bernard Clark Jr. and his staff saw something. And I think maybe they were a little fearful that the uh, play clock was winding down so fast that they would run out of time before they got the kick away. I think they may be trying to go for two. Oh, well, maybe that too. We'll find out coming up. Neither team has a victory coming into the ball game today. Robert Morris is trying to find its first. Howard came in 0 and 3. The Colonials 0 and 1. Right now, Robert Morris trying to poke through an extra point to make this a five-point lead. Oh, they are going to go for two. They brought the offense out. Oh, good play again. And George Martin on the you. play fake, and George Martin will turn the corner. Yes. And jump over you, a defender Chris. and a would-be tackler, and the two-point conversion is in. So now the Colonials' lead is six. It's a touchdown lead for Robert Morris, 22 to 16. Here's a replay. The play action fake to Elijah Jackson, and it fooled everybody. Chris. Man, you, you, you can't draw it up better. We talked about it all day, all day. Power of the run. Power of the run trying to give that uh, fake settler you going to the left and that naked boot wide open. Wide open. Wide open. You can't ask for nothing better than that. Smoke you kept saying during the timeout, they got to go for two here because do the math. I yeah. mean, that's all you have to do is look at the mathematics, and that's why the Colonial coaching staff called the timeout. Great job. Great awareness uh, by the coaches to be in, in the game. And, you know, we can talk about analytics, I guess, for yeah. the day because you're right. It's the better option versus trying to uh, just go with the normal kick for the normal uh, extra point. Great call all the way around. Benson will kick off. Colonials are not out of the hot water just yet. They're mm -hmm. up by a touchdown, 22 to 16. But if Howard can get a touchdown and get an extra point, they can take this one right away from them. Yes, indeed. Three minutes on the clock, that's more than enough time for Quentin to do his thing. And that time, Benson just went with a short kickoff. It was fielded by one of the up men, so a fair catch, and the ball will go to the 25-yard line, and that's where Howard will take over. Time to name our Hercules Tires strong move of the game, and 
Here it is right here. How about DeAndre Hicks on the sweep over to the right side? And there's the from the backside looking good as well. DeAndre Hicks, the Hercules tire strong move of the game brought to you by Hercules tires right on our strength. Okay. Here you have it. Quentin Williams. He's a gunslinger, Ooh, but this time he gets job. chopped down by Ricardo Watson. Smoke, Watson has had a tremendous game today. Oh, he, he, <laughs> we talked about him earlier. His, his, his recklessness, his, 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 his motor, it's a great read. He didn't wait. He knew that his, his guy had his back when that tight end slipped out. Linebacker jumped on him. Great read because that's where he definitely was going to. A loss of seven. Second down, 17 yards to go. Way over top, motion. 225 left in the ball game. Williams, Green. screen pass over the middle. Hunter makes the catch. Hunter breaks the tackle. And Hunter is dragged down at the 31-yard line. Good call, Coach. Uh, that was a good call for the offensive coordinator, knowing that uh, Robin Morris had their ears pent back to rush the quarterback, dump one right over the head of the um, oncoming rushing linebackers coming up the middle. That's a gain of 14. Brings up third down and three with under two minutes to go in the game. The Colonials lead 22 to 16. Williams, blitz coming. Fires through it, and the ball is complete out on a square out to the near side at the 35-yard line, and hauling that one in is Ilazara once again. Yeah, once again, the middle line, the outside linebacker is a little bit out of position. He's either going to hit the flat or play the hook to the curl, understanding that the uh, DB could have had the outside contained. But uh, he had an opportunity to jump on the route since he was going there since nothing was showing on his inside. First and 10, Howard. Williams, two-step drop, steps up, fires his hit as he lets go of it, looking for Illaraza once again. Great pressure. Superior pressure that time. As Matthew Holmes, I believe, was the one who got him, and there was Anello Bazaco once again as well. Hey, when you have when you have to have it, you call it up, you dial it up, and you got to get there. You got to get there. Clock stops. 142 left. Over two. Six point Colonial lead. Again, Williams under pressure. Mask. And he's going to go down. Face mask. Garrett Fairman brought him down, but there's a flag in the backfield, and Ray, you saw it. The officials will make the call here. Referee is Tim Rich. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 42, 15 yard penalty, foul, and an automatic yarder. first down. Wow. Big break there for Howard as they will move the ball into Robert Morris territory, the officials will, right on the Colonial logo head at the center of the field at the 48-yard line. Buckle your chin straps. Here we go. 95 so, seconds left. You got the one-on-one. -on -one. They got the one-on-one -on -one up at the top. Williams over the middle. Oh, Ilarosa off his fingertips and incomplete. Coverage on the play. Tight coverage by Jacob White that time. But that ball got tipped up in the air, and that was dangerous, and now White might have been shaken up. Well, that was dangerously close to being picked off by Lorenzo Uline, who was trailing the play. Yeah, he was. Um, happy that he didn't get the targeting on that ball, too, because he came in leading with his head. That definitely would be smarter next time coming across the middle. Dangerous play. Checking Jacob White right now, the training staff. 131 to go in the football game. Robert Morris with a 22 to 16 lead. George Martin got the Colonials on the board. After a scoreless first period of play, Martin ran it in from five yards out early in the second. Nick Basegli out of the extra point kick. Howard then tied it up. Tayshawn Porter catching a 12-yard pass from Quinton Williams. Faraji 
Woodson added the point after it was 7-7. With 3.30 to go in the second period, DeAndre Hicks got a 43-yard George Martin strike, and Biseglia's point after made it 14-7 Robert Morris. Then in the third quarter, Quinton Williams took a three-yard run, and the kick was blocked by the Colonials. So Robert Morris still led 14-13, and... Howard took its first and only lead of the game when Faraji Woodson nailed a 28-yard field goal. That with 9.04 to go in the fourth period of play, but with 3.01 left, DeAndre Hicks, a jet sweep carry around the right side. He takes it in for the touchdown. The Colonials go for the two-point conversion. George Martin scores that, and Robert Morris is up 22-16. to That's where we are right now with 91 seconds left. Okay, keep everything in front of you as a DB. If I'm in the secondary, I'm making sure I come up, I solidify the tackle, break the ball, bat the ball down. Williams over the middle, has his man open, and that ball is going to be ruled complete. Colonials are going to say no, but Antoine Murray hung on and made the catch. Antoine Murray has had some great acrobatics here this afternoon. Yes, he has. Oh, the ball did, the ball Ooh. did bobble. It bobbled a little bit on the side. It bobbled it, what the hit, it bobbled on the side. On his, on his side, yeah. It hit the ground on the side when he came down. On the side. Officials looking at the play right now. And we'll have to see what they see. Hey, it, when he came and got hit, got the, the bobble. The bobble on the side. Find the best variety of officially licensed merchandise in conference and school branded items at BigSouthStore.com. Gear up with some new apparel or find that perfect gift. Get fully equipped for all your game day fun with BigSouthStore.com. We got to get some new merchandise. We're in a new conference. We better go shopping after the game. I'm, over, I'm going right downstairs to the equipment room. Like, listen, I need oh, some merch. Oh, you're trying to get some of this stuff. <laughs> I'm talking about BigSouthStore.com. <laughs> Yeah, he jawed the ball. Yeah, he jawed the ball. Loose. We'll take another look at it. This is Quentin Williams winding up and throwing down over the middle. Great angle right here. Looked like a catch, but he was right bobbling there. the ball in it. So it yeah, it may have it may have come out. He didn't possess it coming to the ground. And the officials are going to rule an incompletion. Wow, what a break for Robert Morris there. Didn't possess it. You want to see? It? Yeah, yeah, you can turn the monitor. Coaches in the next booth. For Howard University, want to see it? I don't know if we can show it again or not, but right now they're backing the football up to the 48-yard line. After further review, 22 to 16, Robert pass. Morris in the lead. It will be third down from the 48-yard line. The clock will start on the snap. Down is going to be second. The distance is 10 yards to go after they call the play off and say the pass was not completed. Yeah, um, it, the, the free safety did a great job with jarring the ball loose. He didn't fully complete the catch as he fell to the ground. Ball came loose uh, from a certain angle. You couldn't see it from the back, but the camera, camera crew caught a, a nice angle from the front when you actually saw that he didn't possess the ball all the way through its, its entirety. Our producer today, Dylan Thompson, and his fine crew, our director, Dylan McKenna. We want to thank all of the crew members here on ESPN Plus for their coverage here today and for eyeballing that particular play, huh? Great. <laughs> all right, now, I said it's second down. It's actually third down and 10. They've changed the yard marker. Williams is back to pass. It's yeah, do or die it. time. And he floats one, it but it goes into the feet. Uh, Itchy, uh, Richie Ilaraza, and he could not bring it in. It wasn't even close as, again, Williams was feeling some pressure, and now it is fourth down and ten. This could be the last play of the game for Howard University. Yeah, you got to have it. Um, you got one play. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to go for it all. Um, you, 
you know you need 10, 10 yards, try to do a uh, in route. You have the seams, have been working. You just now tried to do a crossing route, which did not. A nice comeback would be real nice to the 10 yards right there. Colonial's trying to bring some heat from the corner as Williams stays alive. Pumps now throws long. End zone, and Ilarasa could not catch up to the football. It goes in complete coverage by Lorenzo Uline. The Colonials will take over on downs and should finish up this ball game with 1-11 left. Great job by the defensive back. Do not bite and come up. Allow to stay equal with the wide receiver, and like we said earlier, don't get beat deep. Another long ball, and... Ilaraza could not get to the blue carpet to get to it just a little too long. And again, the wind at the back of Quentin Williams when he let that one go. So now the Colonials can just mop it up here. First down and 10, George Martin will bring his ball club out onto the field. Two timeouts left for Howard, by the way, and they need to be smart, but the Colonials need to keep pushing forward. This is Elijah Jackson in a nice cutback dive to the 48-yard line for a pickup of about four. It looked like the clock didn't start on this one. Well, it stopped right now because Howard called timeout. Boy, if the Colonials can hold on here, Smoke, this would be a huge victory for them. The first ever meeting mm -hmm. between Robert Morris and Howard of the MEAC. And the Colonials in their first year in the Big South will start conference play soon, but a non-conference test here today against a very stellar ball club uh, despite the fact that they're 0-3 coming in. They've had three really, really tough games, and you know, I think they expected to come in here Howard today and try to win this ball game, and you know, the Colonials so far... They were up for the challenge. I yep. mean, at the end of the day, it's a great way to build off of a win like this. Um, like we talked about it earlier in the in the halves or in the beginning of the game, the offensive line having an identity. Yep. What is this team's identity? You know, will we run the ball? Will we pass the ball? Are we defensive focus? There's a lot of things that they can build off of here from this one game if they if they are able to uh, carry it out. Martin has Jackson behind him. Second down and seven yards to go. Elijah Jackson, a little stop and go move. Cuts it down to the 45-yard line. Picks up about three more. Tuck that ball away. Again, Howard will call timeout. We're at 58 seconds left in the ballgame. It is not over yet. Third down and three. When we come back to play, 58 ticks left on the game clock. Robert Morris up by a touchdown. 22 to 16 over Howard in what turned into a seesaw fourth period. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's definitely a number of plays that we can pin to, but at the end of the day, um, our offensive line won it up front. Yep. You know, and they definitely, you know, held it down. You know, applying their will, creating space, opening up the lanes, and and, and just finishing their blocks. Oftentimes, we were seeing a lot of. Uh, white jerseys being picked up off the ground. But, you know, once again, 58 seconds, um, you want to definitely possess the ball, control it. Let's try to get this first down. Big play right here for the Colonial offense. They can get the first down, the game is over for all intents and purposes. Howard's out of timeouts. Martin gives off. Jackson. Good pickup. Finds space. Jackson and, uh, drags people is. over the 40. There it is. On the near sideline. And the Colonials pick up the first down with 52 seconds left. <laughs> and all Robert Morris needs to do now is run out the clock. They're going to go into the victory formation. Taven Harville is playing deep in the backfield just to make sure nothing absolutely insane goes on. And George Martin will step up to the line of scrimmage, take the snap, take the knee. Clock cannot be stopped. Robert Morris is going to win this ball game by a final score of 22 to 16. Wow. What a game, Chris. What a game. Tremendous effort by the Colonials. A tremendous fight by Howard University. But it belongs to the Colonials 
here today, Ray, and Robert Morris wins it 22 to 16 and has to come from behind to do so. Hey, I mean, a W is a W, a win is a win. So uh, at the end of the day, no matter how it got accomplished, um, we did it. And oftentimes, you will grow. What is your identity? From this day forth, they're going to find out later on this week how they were successful, the things that they need to improve at. Um, because there were some things that, you know, that didn't go their way. But they can fix that. Uh, but overall, uh, they were able to establish a nice way of finding out who's this team identity and how will we be looking um, as a team going forward. How big was that jet sweep by DeAndre Hicks huge. to go to put Robert Morris back into the lead? It was huge. I mean, it was a great call, first of all, um, by the offensive coordinator. He did a great job with um, the deception. Um, we had been going to the left multiple times, and then through that sprint, that sprint option is a great way to great way to um, keep the defense off balance. Robert Morris improves its record to one and one with its first victory of the 2021 campaign. Howard unfortunately falls to zero and four after losing to Richmond, Maryland, Hampton last week, and now Robert Morris here today. And we want to thank you so much for joining us here in our first home game in what 6,000 days or something like that. I don't know how many it's been. But. It has definitely felt like forever, but uh, I, I could not have wanted to come back and, and been back at the, the greatest time that it is. It, Smoke. This is football. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today's production was produced by Dylan Thompson and directed by Dylan McKenna. For Dr. Raymond Smoke Thomas, I'm Chris Shuplin saying so long from Joe Walton Stadium in Pittsburgh where the final score is the Robert Morris University Colonials 22 and the Howard University Bison 16. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.